Hello and welcome to episode 93 of Gamers of Lost Park Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Chesson, and joining me this week, it's the other spark on the pod. I've been lazy and haven't done him an intro. It's Mr. Darren Witten. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> Hello, sir. I- I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad. Apologies for the intro less intro. That's all right. You know, that's okay. It's difficult to think of one in a pinch when we've done like 40 each <laughs> or 45 each or whatever it is. It's difficult. So that's all right, mate. And the thing it's, is, some, some weeks, I think, like this week, for instance, one thing that I did think, I was like, oh, I'm not doing the intro. That's one thing I don't have to think about. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, I do it, you know, kind of a bit of a, you know, I'm having lunch in the, in the, in a, like a Tuesday. It's, we're doing this on Wednesday, but a Tuesday, while I'm munching some lunch, I'm normally kind of like thinking about the intro and thinking about kind of what I'm going to talk about on the, on the show. Um, but this lunchtime, I was basically just munching and, and, t- and a meeting at the same time. I was doing a meeting and muting myself as I was eating. Um, so I've just absolutely had a day, a day. So how are you, sir? How are, how are things in your world? They're all right. They're all right. I can't believe there was no time for Dazza during your lunchtime, munching and crunching. I literally, I was talking. My every now and then, I, I had some celery and some apples, very crunchy things and crisps, and like these. Oh yeah, kind of, do, these, do, do, is your diet is that mainly you, you'd sort of gravitate towards things that crunch. You, you exactly. wouldn't eat, for instance, cheese <laughs> or salami. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I, I had cheese and apple, yeah, cheese and apple, and some and some some celery sticks, and yeah. and these little kind of low fat crisps that I absolutely love from Marks and Spencers. Um, and no plug there, but they're really nice. They're like kind of honey barbecue kind of things, and they're absolutely delicious. And so I kind of grabbed all those. I did, literally I ran down to the kitchen, just went, "I'll have that, that, that," and then grabbed a bottle of water, and then ran back up to the office because I had another meeting. So I'm in the meeting, I'm chatting away, going, "Yeah, yeah." So what do you think about that? Muting my phone crunch you know because i had another meeting straight after oh, so it was just like i was like the tactical mute exactly and then yeah. someone would go so tony what do you think of that i'm like oh crap it's my turn i've got a mouthful <laughs> of celery yeah and you've got to sort of be very gentle with the mute button so the other people can't hear the the sort of the click <laughs> well exactly exactly and anyone in our kind of go-to meeting or our, we, we have a thing called my collab by my tell would be able to kind of see my line every now and then muting so it was just hilarious but i managed to get through it without anyone going what are you eating um so which is really cool but uh, uh yes that's funny do you take uh, do you take such an assortment to work um would, would you take a packed lunch to work at all well, no, I mean, because I work from home, because uh, I work from home, when I go when I go into London or go into Manchester, I, I would just, just kind of, out. you know, get sushi or, or, oh. or pret a manger or something like that. That's really nice, but I sort of just had this great picture of you getting out sort of a, a 1980s Star Wars packed oh. lunchbox. Oh my God, that would be so cool. With your celery and everything in it, and I just <laughs> I just loved that picture in my head. You could have one by your desk at home, though, anyway. No one would I could. know. I could. Well, they, I would. they wouldn't know, because you'd tell everyone, because that's cool. Absolutely, I'd happily take that. I'd happily take that to work. But I do Nicola. Nicola kind of has a. She takes a packed lunch um, because she's a fussy eater. Um, she takes a packed lunch. So I do. I do Nicola a packed lunch um, almost every day. Um, so apart from if I've been into London in the week, I get her some sushi from Wasabi, and then so she has sushi. Um, but the rest of the time, I'll make a sandwich or a salad or crackers or something. Uh, you know, and, and just kind of make her uh, like a couple. It's like today was like almost three tiers. You know, there was there was the there was the fruit for the morning there was a yogurt for later there was oh, like, like a, a bento box it was it was it's just like and i always or put a, tiffin, a, little post- a tiffin thing exactly i always put a little post-it on it as well you know that oh. that's like your intro that becomes hot because you know you set you set yeah. yourself a precedent the first couple of days that's really funny it's like oh i'm making a a, a quippy comment about what's inside you know by day 150 you're like oh god what can i write on here? It's like, yeah. I, I hope this doesn't sound cynical or anything it's, it's not it's meant in the best intentions but it's like writing cards to your loved one after 20 years yes you know valentine's day the the 19th time it's like i've said it all it's like what can i say or you know with the christmas it just feels like you it's very difficult isn't it it's, it's like like you say with the intros but does nicola have a, a retro star wars or boba fett packed lunchbox no she has strawberry shortcake does she, oh well that's that's kind of, that's in the same ballpark isn't it it's like the female equivalent no no she has uh, she has oh, uh, <laughs> she, she has lake land plastic tupperware it's a very nice one it's got like it's all rubber around the edge you know for sealing in there the goodness inside I, I, was, I was still like in the strawberry shortcake thing 
I remember but the rubbers that girls said used to have a rubber, and it used to smell really nice. Exactly. I mean, like I when, like when I first it. started with the post its, I would put a post it on the door of the fridge that would kind of almost have like an another meaning to what's inside. So it's always like I would complete the joke, you know, I'd finish the joke on the on the lunch, you know, and yeah. uh, and occasionally if I because most of the time I, I would have if I was working in London, I'd be gone by then, you know, and Nicola would like send me a little text going, "Oh, that was so funny," and it was because the more she said like lols and more lols i got the more it kind of you know you had to beat it you had to do another one so it got really hard but i think i'm still keeping the comedy going (laughs) it's still going is it it's still going yeah every day the benchmark must be high yes yes a lot lot of a lot of them are about her burping and enjoying her dinner and being a ginjo and that's it really (laughs) brilliant well you know that's comedy gold that can just run forever can't it Absolutely. So, how's your week been? Just don't get your your lunch post it notes mixed up with your Valentine's verse. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, how's my week? It's, it's, it's been a quiet one. I, right. I, I haven't got much to talk about or, or to to tell you about apart from, and this isn't gamey. This is this is sort of a testament to my amazing non DIY abilities. The shower broke the, the other day. Like right. Two days ago, Claire came in after attempting to have a shower. She said the shower doesn't work. Oh no! So, uh, of course it does. As if, as if I'm when I press the button, it's it's gonna work. What's wrong with it? You press the button and it doesn't work. Oh, let me have a look. <laughs> Do exactly the same thing. As if it's gonna work. Um, and the shower was just dead. Now, I've never come across a broken shower before. They've always just worked. Right. Um. So anyway, I had a little look. I uh, couldn't see anything wrong with it. Um. And then that night, I got my dad to have a look because he's he's Mister DIY. You know, it's like. I ain't got a clue how to do this, Dad. And he just says, yeah, well, that, it's easy. And he gets his hammer out, just gives something a whack, and I don't know, and a house just gets erected on the spot sort of thing. <laughs> um, so he came round, and he, he he had a look. And it was quite good, because he concurred with me. He was like, yeah, I can't see anything wrong with this at all. And I was like, yeah. there's a funny thing here, because we've got, we've got power at this point, but there's no power in here. I think that means the shower unit's got a problem. And he was like, yeah, I think so. And so he had a little faff around, and he, he said, I just want to check this. And he pulled out this little plastic thing. Mm. to have a look um, and this is the thing where the water went into the shower and he had a look and he went right fine and b- before he even looked at it I said I'll go and turn the electric off he was like no nah, it's fine and I was like you sure and he was like it's alright so I was like okay alright dad so he, he did his look and he looked at yeah. this thing and, 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 and so anyway the next day I uh, did some research and decided to buy a new shower this was yesterday in fact and I decided to buy a new shower I'd got some advice um, off an electrician Mm-hmm. Other different options. I got uh, a, a diagnosis from him that it was the PCB that was dead in the shower, so really I needed a new shower, and I got some information. So anyway, I went and bought a new sh- another shower from Screwfix. They told me that it was easy to to <laughs> easy to install. Um, so I got the shower and I was feeling really proud of myself. I went into Screwfix like a like you know like a geezer. I was like, all right, mate, yeah, I'm here. I've I've come for a shower. I felt like the big man carrying it out. Look at me. <laughs> did you have a pencil behind your ear? <laughs> I didn't have a pencil behind my ear, but I did like sort of say, "All right, mate," and stuff. You know, in a, in a, in a sort of bravado way. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like Can you just bat me in here. <laughs> so, uh, and I was like, oh, your butt crack right. was showing as you were leaving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had a hard hat under my arm. Plumber's bob. Yeah. Um, so I came on with the, with the shower and I got it all out on the bed and I was looking at it all and I was like, okay, so what would go where? And I was sort of determining whether I could do it or not. So I was going into the bathroom and I was looking at the innards of the shower and where everything were connected. Mm. I have no, by the way, I've got no, I'm no good at this stuff. I'm not confident with it. I'm an IT guy. I'm not good at the DIY. Just because I've never been shown or never tried, I suppose. Uh, anyway. And I sort of thought, right, okay, this looks fine. I, I've worked out where the wires go. Um, I can work out where the where the water pipe goes. But the thing is, the water on the one that I've got at the moment comes in on the right-hand side of the shower. But this shower, it looks like it goes underneath at the bottom. So how is that going to work? So I thought, well, I'll just have a look at the shower in the in the bathroom. So I went into the one that was on the wall. And I looked where the where the water came in. And it was where my dad was looking. And that little plastic thing, I thought, oh, I'll, I'll just have a look under here. Um, now, luckily, I'd turned the electric off already for the shower because it was isolated to its own fuse and I turned the shower electric off because I was more cautious than my father mm-hmm. and so I pulled this little plastic thing out I gave it a little wiggle and pulled it out just like I'd seen my dad do the day before I would not have done it if I hadn't seen my dad do it and when I pulled that out all of a sudden water just went everywhere oh no it, it somehow pulled out the um the, the water pipe that was that was going into the inlet in the shower <laughs> oh, and all of a sudden I just in a, I was just like it just went Psh! 
It went everywhere. It went all over me. I was just like freezing cold. I was like, <gasps> like, that, like that. But oh I was scared God. to die. And all I could see in my panic was that the whole of the circuit board and all the wires got soaked. The lights got soaked. It was flipping, going everywhere because it was like half in and half out. So it was spraying. Then I pulled it out and it just went all over me. Um, and I was like, what am I going to do? And it was going all down the walls and stuff. And I was like, flipping heck. I was in the house on my own. Oh I, my I was God. like, I was like, ah. Oh. And I thought, right, okay, calm down, Daz. Luckily, I'd located the stopcock before this because I, because I knew I was going to need that. Well but done. I didn't, but I didn't. I would have turned it off if I'd have known that this thing. If I thought this thing was going to start spraying water, I would have done it first. But because my dad had done that already, safely, I thought there was that that, did, that there wouldn't be a problem. I think when he moved it, it must have loosened it. Anyway, so I ran downstairs with it spraying everywhere. <laughs> That's it. I thought, blame your dad. Blame your dad. Yeah, dad. <laughs> It weren't me at all. So I legged it downstairs thinking, it's all right if it's going everywhere because I'll just turn it off at the stopcock. Got to the stopcock, grabbed the tap, twisted it. It didn't move. It was stuck. I've wow. never used the stopcock since I've been here. I've been here like a year and a half. And uh, I hadn't tested it. And I just assumed that it would work and it was stuck. It was stuck and it would not move. I could not turn the water off. I was like, oh my goodness me. So then I like ran upstairs. <laughs> thought, right, first of all, I've got to sort out the water. There's damaging stuff or could damage stuff if it carries on. So I kind of, luckily the pipe had some uh, slack. So I pulled the pipe up and jammed a towel behind it, which meant that it could, it, it was um, pointing down to the bath. So the water was just pouring into the bath. So I'm on a water meter. So apart from the water costing me, you know, whatever water costs. It wasn't damaging anything. It wasn't on the carpet anymore. It wasn't on the walls anymore. It wasn't going all over the wires anymore. Wow. Which was really scary. Um, so then I went downstairs and like looked at my toolbox. is ridiculous. <laughs> I was like, got my like, Fisher-Price toolbox a, out. It has a Doctor Who spanner. <laughs> a <laughs> Minecraft thing, hammer. Yeah. yeah, it's like, yeah, a Minecraft diamond sword made out of foam. <laughs> um, and I was like, I need something to sort of, like, I can brace this tap with so I can wrench it round. And I got this wrench... But where the tap was, there wasn't enough room to wrench it round. And I was like, oh my goodness me. And then I started to think, I don't know what to do here. I don't know what to do here. So then I rang um, the water company. And I said, look... Uh, so where was the I'm, water going at this point? Was it just continuing point, to pour I, out? It was pouring out, but I directed it into... It was in the bath. It was Instead of going down the wall, because I'd like sort of grabbed... The pipe had some slack, so I pulled it up and jammed a towel behind it. It was pouring straight down into the bath. So oh I just whipped the, whipped the plug hole out. Wow. So at least it, at least it wasn't going anywhere, but I didn't. It just I just wasn't happy because it was just going like into the bath all the time, and it, and I was just like I don't like this. But I was like kind of at least it's not causing damage, but I'm not happy. I want this to stop. Um, so I ran the water board. I was like I don't know what to do here. Uh, I've done this and it started to do this, and I can't stop it because the the, the stopcock stuck. And can you help me? I've been on YouTube. And they'd say, you know, like WD forty and twisting it left and right. I was like, it's jammed so much, I can't move it, and I'm scared because when I really tried brute force, mm. it was the whole pipe was sort of freestanding and it was swaying a bit, and I was scared to death that I could snap the pipe, and then I would be having it gushing in the in the sort of electric mains cupboard, which is where the stop comes. So I was petrified. Then I was like, I can't, <laughs> at least it would stop coming out in your bath, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, so it stopped going out where it was sort of not causing any damage and go all over the gas and electric meters. Oh my <laughs> and God. I was like, oh my goodness me. So I was like really panicking and I hung up the waterboard and I, I told them the story. And they said, it's all right, you can probably stop it from outside because every house has got a, 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 ta- a stopcock outside and on, yep, the, on yep. the street, which I didn't know about. So I went outside and she said, yeah, it should be on the pavement around here. And I was like, there isn't one. What does it look like? It's a little square box. I was like, there isn't one. Um, it's been tarmacked. Does that help? She said the council might have tarmacked over it, oh, and I was like, no. "What are you on about?" And I looked, and I, and she said, well, "Hold on a minute, I'll look on Street Map." And she had a look, and she said, "Yeah, it looks like it's been tarmacked over for you." Oh my god! And I was like, "Well, that's ridiculous." So I'll have to look at that at another time. I mean, is that legal? I don't know, you know, because this this is causing me problems now. And I was like, well, what do I do? And she's like, you'll have to ring an emergency plumber. And I was like, oh, okay, thanks a lot. And I thought, I don't want to ring an emergency plumber. It's going to cost me a fortune. So anyway. At that point, I rang my dad. <laughs> so he came round. Um, with his hammer. Yeah, well, he, he had a doctor's appointment, so I had to wait. So he came round with his hammer, uh, Maxwell Silver Hammer. He got round about six. This started happening at about half two. Mm. My dad came at about six, like the cavalry, and he, 
he tried to do the tap. I was I was kind of wanted him to do it easily, but then there'd be the embarrassment. You know, if he just sort of twisted it and said, what are you on about? Mm. <laughs> I was sort of worried about that. But he couldn't do it either. And then he got he, he got his tools out and he was like, blooming heck. He goes, I think it's stuck, Daz. He goes, I don't think I can put any more pressure on this in case it snaps, which is what I thought. And I was like, well, I didn't know what to do, Dad. That's why I called you. And he went, hold on a minute. And he got like two wrenches out as a last resort and he braced it with one wrench, which I didn't have two wrenches. I only had one from about 1910. Um, and he got one and he got, and then he braced it with one and he grabbed it with the other and he sort of, you know, went opposite ways with them. And he sort of went, and it, and it turned and then he managed to shut it off. And I was like, oh, Dad, I'm so wow. thankful. Well done, Dad. Oh, because I've been, and it, I'd been trying to recouple it in the bathroom, but I got so soaked. And then I had to go and get Sam from school, and I didn't have time to do I was sopping wet. And uh, it was just ridiculous. But basically, my dad, just to cut it short, my dad stopped the water, and then once he stopped the water, we reattached the bit, the bit in the shower and then put the, to put the water on. But it was like, it was a bad shower. It was, it, was, it was really bad. Even though the water was safe in the bath, it was just horrible. And I, I, I just couldn't stand the thought of it, the water of being out of control. Of not being able to fix it, I didn't like not being able to fix it. I was powerless. I didn't like it. And you're never going to do DIY ever again. <laughs> I told you I wasn't good at DIY, didn't I? <laughs> so then, yeah, the chef. Then was me telling you to start painting. And you were like, I can't what maybe I should if you did that. <laughs> maybe I should start with painting before moving on to electricals and water. Yeah, you got to work yourself up. Room. Water's like you know level ten. You're at level yeah. one right now. You got to level. Even, up. I'm like minus ten. I'm like level minus ten. So the new shower was sat all day today, but guess what? I didn't try fitting it. Oh wow! <laughs> I just left it. So I've, I've rung the. <laughs> When's your dad plumber. coming round? <laughs> no, I've, my dad when he looked at it, he said that there was a joint in it that he wasn't confident about doing. So I've had to. I've <laughs> rung the plumber. Should have just done that in the beginning. Wow, so there you go. So that was the uh, that was my shower stress that I had yesterday. It was not good. I've never had an experience like that, and it wasn't good. I don't know what I'd have done if my dad wasn't around. Yeah, it was still been the water full of of, of Blackpool. <laughs> it would have been the new it, tourist it, attraction. <laughs> it would have, and I'm just I'm a bit annoyed. I'm going to try and find out the shout, but the fact that there's no external stopcock for my property, yes, because that would have just solved it. And on the way home today, I was walking home. And I looked, because uh, I, I, I've never noticed these before, these little these, they're little square plates in the pavement. I've never noticed them before because I've never looked. And every house has got one. Even down, the, even down my tarmac pavement bit, down my uh, road. Mm. And the house next door's got one, but I don't seem to have one. That's not right, is it? No. Maybe next door's is yours as well. Because like Maybe. where I live, I live in like a kind of little kind of corner of, of almost two roads. It's almost like a bit of a cul-de-sac, really. Um, and... And there's one at the end. Uh, there's one at the end, and I think we we share it with like uh, another neighbour or something. Because when they put the water meter on, I think they had to do something there. So it's always like, and 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 once my neighbour was having some work done and turned it off, and our water went off as well. So I don't know if there was, I don't know, I haven't really kind of looked, but I don't know if there's like two taps in there. Yeah. And they just turned both of them because they couldn't decide which one. Or yeah, well, you don't, you uh, it's don't just look, one to you, feed you know? many. Yeah, I haven't got a clue, but I'm going to try and find out. But, I mean, it's all right now, my stopcock works, but I still kind of want to know. Um, <laughs> so, there, yeah, there, that's that's the highlight, well, the, the low light of my week. <laughs> Gamers do DIY, it's our new podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, just watch me t- attempt anything and you'll be in stitches, mate. <laughs> you should have Claire t- filming it and t- um, doing the, the instant streaming thing. Yeah, hilarious. I'm only good at stuff in the, in the digital world. I'm not yes. good at anything that's actually physical. <laughs> just, I just fail. <laughs> Uh, so what about you? Have you, had a, have you had a good week, mate? Yeah, yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Is that quite funny actually? Because we had a leaky, um, we had a leaky um, gutter when all the oh, rain because it was to, really raining. Come so out and to, have a look. Yeah. So I had to hire, I had to hire a really big ladder because um, I don't have the, oh. the ladder. I have like three steps, you know, and that's it. So I had to hire a big ladder from HSS. Um, and I tell you what, trying to go up to the top of my house with a ladder and then try and unclip the guttering as well to clip it back in. Oh my God, my legs were like jelly. They were just You're like, putting me to shame. Why didn't you hire a guy with the ladder to do the job? Would you like to do stuff like that? No, not really, but I didn't... There wasn't a guy that you could hire on HSS website. You know? it was just like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, I want the ladder, and you, you want a little thing that's in the basket that says plus one guy to do it. 
<laughs> the guy who, do- who dropped it off, he was like, what do you want this for? I said, I've got to go up on my roof. He went, oh, I'm a cl- qualified roofer. And I felt like going to him, will you stay here, please? Don't leave. Yeah. <laughs> you know, do you don't, don't gloat. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was kind of a bit of deal work. So that, that was that. But the big thing, for, not big thing, but one of the things that happened this week was um, I, I I went over um, 100,000, uh, no, yeah, 100,000 uh, gamer score on, on Xbox. Um, oh, wow. So I was quite chuffed. But I gamified it. It before I went over that, where I got I got my gamer score to ninety nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine, um, which I which I absolutely loved because I got I got an achievement and it took me to I think like ninety nine thousand um, you know, nine hundred and fifty nine and I was like right I need forty I need to find forty achievements and then I, and then I think I got another ten in fours I was like right I need thirty I can't go over that I want to stop at nine 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 so and then I managed to do I managed to find two fifteen point achievements in um, I think it might have been injustice which I'll get to in a bit and then I was like oh yeah that's it I just want to stay there and I was just it looks so good all of the nines it just looks so neat and so lovely yeah I do like that you sent me a picture and it was. It's a great picture, you know. You could frame that. I, you know, if you, if you had a gaming room, that'd be quite nice. Um, so yeah, you couldn't find one point though. No, well, I felt that I had a look. I had a look online. I googled it. You know, uh, one point achievements, and they are out there. There was a couple of um, there was a couple of games, Xbox Live arcade games, um, that one had a one point achievement for when you press um, start. But I could not find them on the. Um, some one was for Xbox One, one was from Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty, and I could not find them in the store. I think over the weekend, I think that Xbox Live was having a bit of a wobbly every now and then because when I was trying to do something, it was really slow, um, and then it it just wasn't finding anything in the store, um, so I couldn't find it. And then I had a look at um, Sunset Overdrive has a one point achievement for redoing a mission um, and doing it under par. So I was looking at that, but. I had to download that, and and then the end. I just wanted to continue playing what I've been playing this week. Um, so I got I got another fifteen point achievement. So I now have you know a hundred thousand and fourteen um, now. So which has gone it's gone messy again now. But I wouldn't mind uh, I wouldn't mind that uh, one point achievement just to kind of get it kind of nice and balanced again. What about going for one 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 one? Yes, there you go. That's my next one. That's the next one. Did you know? Uh like getting a telegram from the Queen when you're 100 years old in Great Britain. You should, you should get an email from Phil Spencer when you get 100,000 Xbox achievement points. Did you, did you get that email? Yeah, he came round. He came round and he... And he, and he a, came. As soon as you got past 100, the bell went. Yeah. It went It went dink. I got that achievement and suddenly I heard a knock on the door. There was like Phil. The Twilight Zone. <laughs> there was Phil with a plaque and a golden joypad. Uh, just wow. ready to ready to give and, it, but and you said like Phil come in and he went no I can't I've got to be somewhere and then he just disappeared because somebody else had got a hundred thousand points exactly he just puffed away it's just a poof I've gone because uh, whisk- can... just into a puff of green Xbox coloured smoke yes you know like that thing that used to kind of fire up when the Xbox the Xbox the original Xbox started uh, whoa, 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 whoa. that was it he just disappeared like that yeah he disappeared into a crack in the ground that shaped you know remember that X that used to <laughs> <Yes>. open up. <laughs> <laughs> that's how he both emerges and disappears through the, the, the ground opens up in that X that's and he his, sort of appears and then disappears through that that's it that's his portal but did you like my um, <laughs> did you like my custom gamer pick that I um, I've managed to set because there is the there's a uh, an update that's out which allows you to set custom gamer picks oh yeah I did notice that oh brilliant I'll have to do that I haven't changed mine for so many years Yes, so it's really cool. I quite liked it. I don't know if it's um, people that are in the preview program or if it's it's if it's regularly available. But you can just go change pick, and then it just allows you to if you've got a memory card or USB stick plugged into your Xbox, it just allows you to pick that, pick a picture from there, and then you get to shape it. It has to be quite big though. Um, it was after a quite a big um, because I had another image that I'm using for Twitter that I, I like, um, and um, it said it wasn't big enough. It said it needed to be 1080p by. 1080 by something else so it, it needed quite a big beefy uh quite a big beefy image wow they're more stringent on the uh <laughs> specs for the picture than they are for the games well exactly so i think that's maybe <laughs> because it's used for like other things like on on the web page you know if you go to xbox.com online or on the app um so they wanted it to be nice nice and big and and, and good quality i like that you know it's their infrastructure yeah. so i, I quite they're uh, obviously 
proud of it and they don't want it they don't want it messing up with blocky images good on them yeah, I sorry. hate looking at a blocky image anyway oh god it's horrible there's nothing worse than that especially in this day and age two things that annoy me about that is one of them is a blocky image and the other one is when you go to a piece of content where it's like check out this new trailer and you press play and it says not available in your territory yeah, that is really bad. That is just like, what? Doesn't England... Don't, don't we deserve yeah. the new trailer for the new Fox X-Men TV show? <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, nerd yeah. rage! You know, so... Uh, <laughs> and if you're going to... You know, if you're going to do it, I wish that you didn't have to click play be- to find it out. I wish that, you know, if yes. it's going to be like that, that that's the default thing before you've even played it. Somehow it just shows... It recognises your IP and just puts that notice up so I don't even have to get excited. Yes, I so can just see. Oh, oh, something new from Jimmy on Jimmy Fallon, and then you click on it, and it's just not available in your territory. I'm like, you son of a fucking just. But yes, but that was kind of <laughs> the two things. But that was kind of my highlight of the week. Really quite sad, um, but it was. Um, but yeah, so I was really quite excited about kind of getting over a hundred thousand. I think that's amazing. I don't know what my gamer score is, but it's nowhere near hundred thousand. To tell you that much. Once upon a time, um, back at the place we used to work. Uh, in my department in IT, yeah. our boss um, decided to, as a motivational thing, to do an to do an achievements thing because he was an Xbox gamer as well. Right, and we were, we were all on the 360 back then, and he decided he, that he was going to sort of motivate us with an with an achievements um, graph or you know an achievements challenge. I think it was, and the idea was that he drew up all these achievements for for what we did. You know, and it was like the what if you did like I don't know, say sold five issues in a week. You know, um, all things like that. I can't think of exactly what they were, but there was loads of different categories that he did, and they all awarded achievement points. And the ones that, and then there was a prize for the for the winner at the end of like the month or two months or something. And it, it was a you've probably heard of gamification, but it was very early yeah. on before really that became a buzzword. And you know, it did motivate everybody on the team. It got everybody really excited, um, and because it tied in with the sort of the Xbox thing, it just sort of struck a chord with the guys. And uh, it was a good move from James. Good on you, James, if you're listening. It was really good. I always loved that. Um, but yeah, it's it's funny, isn't it? By by, well, just just what achievement points can do, and you can actually you can actually spread those out into other um, facets of life, and uh, it can be quite fun. Absolutely, there is something about that kind of uh, that kind of achieving. Your gamer score, by the way, is fifty five uh, fifty five thousand one hundred eighty five one hundred eighty nine. Sorry, not very uh, respectable then, I suppose. It was no, you're good, halfway it? there. You're halfway there. It's good. It's good. There. Keep going. Keep going. I will. I will. I will. And I do. I do. And I prefer achievements. I don't care about. We've had this conversation before. Yeah, I'm yeah. not bothered about trophies. <laughs> no, trophies don't mean a thing for me, and I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, uh-huh. but yeah, no, it's re- it's really bizarre. But they, that kind of whole gamification. Uh, a friend of mine who I used to work for, he ran a uh, development when I was back when I was a developer. I used to work for this um, independent developing company, and we used to we. And I used to go up to his. I used to go to Oxford. Um, I used to go to Oxford once a week um, on a Friday. So I used to go up there. We used to kind of check in our code, do some stuff like that. And we'd go for like a, a really nice pub lunch. And it was really, and then I'd drive back very sleepy. And, um, and he had a thing where he had um, four kids. And they their pocket money was based on the things that they did, like chores, like being ready for school, chores, all of that. And they would get points on a leaderboard that was on the fridge and if you got so many points you got your pocket money but if you got if you if you kind of had got over if there was another level if you got over that you got bonus pocket money oh wow extra tier reward and his kids were so well behaved and they were so good <laughs> and it was just really it was like you had to be your homework had to be done you had to tidy your bed you know you had to t- make your bed tidy your room be ready for school on time you know and then there was like bonus chores that you could do for bonus achievements it was awesome Wow. Sort of sounds like a conflict, doesn't it? Bonus chore. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's yes, like an I'm, oxymoron, I'm, isn't it? It's just yeah. like it just doesn't go. I've unlocked the bonus chore. Crack. <laughs> Brilliant. I get to clean the bin. <laughs> I get I get to mow the lawn. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, brilliant. But when pocket money day comes around, you see, who's laughing then? Cha ching. Absolutely. Yeah. Certainly so, not the father that's skinning himself because yeah. he's fleecing him because they're so well behaved. Yeah. So, what have you been playing this week, sir? I've been playing Persona Five. Persona Five. 
Persona Five. So yeah, I, got, I, I, I I'm not gonna. I don't want to go on about Persona Five too long because I think I took my quota last week of twenty minutes or whatever it was. I'm going Persona Five. It's amazing. It's, I love it so much. Um, but yeah, so last week, previously on Persona Five, last week I I was saying right, I'm this is the end. I can't mm-hmm. wait. I'm gonna finish it. Yeah. And so the finishing of Persona Five was all earmarked in for Friday evening. Right. Okay? Got dinner out of the way, got everything sorted, sat down, Claire's excited, I was excited, it's like, this is it. <laughs> it was like just before the big boss, the end boss, the final boss. <laughs> okay, so started it on Friday, I don't, I don't know, about 7 o'clock or something like that, and played it um, and fought this boss, um, or got to the boss and fought the boss. And it was like, Demon, we've done it. High five. Yes. That was so difficult. That was so difficult. But the music was amazing. Well, that was really good. Only to find that that wasn't the final boss. Oh, no. And then we fought another boss. You know what these games are like. Then there was another boss. It's like, this is the final boss. And then basically that went on all night until we were so tired. We just had to, just like, this is ridiculous. We're going to have to save it. So I had to like play it until I had an opportunity to save it because I couldn't lose everything I'd done. Mm. Saved it went to bed couldn't sleep because i was still excited i was about to complete persona <laughs> got up i woke up at like half five and i was like i've got to go and carry on with persona went downstairs carried on with persona just sort of putting the feelers out because i didn't want it to like end without mm. like claire seeing um but anyway what it turned out to be was a whole new like sort of in the game you, you fight through the palaces it's a whole new palace oh wow and like more twists in the story uh, it's bizarre, man. Honestly, I thought that I was working towards like sort of the end, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden he just said, "There's all this to do now," and I was like, "My goodness me!" And I was kind of lucky because I'd done some groundwork before, which meant that this wouldn't take me as long as it might have done otherwise. So anyway, went through all this, then it opened up another area. I was like, "Flipping heck, is this ever going to end?" So I played it. Sort of as much as I could on Saturday and, and Saturday night, like proper hammering it. Um, and there was a, more bosses. It's like, this is the final boss. How many times did I say and think that surely this is the last boss? Um, and then it was boss after boss after boss. And then on Sunday, um, in the afternoon around two ish, I finished it. And I think I defeated the final boss probably about 12 o'clock, maybe. So about 12-ish, defeated the final boss, and then just enjoyed playing the rest of the... Because you sort of play the end as well. And uh, yeah, it was wonderful, and I was so elated when the credits rolled. It's kind of like, because the game is so long, I suppose you can't just have a snap ending. Mm -hmm. Um, So the the end was really... It's kind of the end was like 20 hours long. Wow. From when I thought (laughs) it was going to be the end... But like in hindsight, maybe that isn't the end. But just like wow, what a game! So I finished it. I've completed Persona Five. Hooray oh, wow. for me! Well done, well done, dude. Cheers, dude. Um, it was like the ending sounds like the end of Lord of the Rings. You know, it just kept yeah. going. <laughs> it was like that. It was very like that. I kind of like the ending of Lord of the Rings. I like, I like the sort of elongated because I don't want it to end. So I quite like it to to sort of take its time and and, and unwind. It took me 108 hours all in. Which I think is probably, I don't know, about average, I think. It probably could take longer. I mean, I went through some of the text really quick during the game. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's done, man. And wow. It was How do you new, feel now that it's done? I feel that I'm really glad that I gave it a try, because I've never played a Persona game, as you know. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love Persona now, as I said last week. Um, I can't wait for the next one, but it took 10 years for Persona 5 to come out after Persona 4. So we could be waiting a while. I'm not sure what will happen there. Um, I feel it's weird, you know. I f- Claire, but feels it as well. We feel like there's something missing mm. because we played it for. It's been, a, I think, it's been about a month, um, and it really sort of, especially the last few days, but it, it ramped up and up and up. The more we got into it, the more we sort of wanted to play it. Yes, and you get really invested in the characters, and you enjoy, we sort of enjoyed our time with them. Mm-hmm. And it, it ended, and then the next day or, or that evening, I th- yeah, Sunday evening, it will have been. And Claire's like, "Well, what are you going to play?" I was like, "I don't feel like playing anything." <laughs> Oh, no. I was like, I saw, yeah, I know. He's like, I'm cured of games. I don't want to play anything now unless it's Persona. I was like, I miss it already. I was like, I miss him. I miss the guys. I don't want to play it again. It's like I frazzled from it, you know. 
but I was just like, uh, I just think I need to decompress, if you like. Just need to sort of mull it over and get over it. And I, I tried. I, I was putting games on and just turning them off straight. I was like, I had to go on Resogun. Lost the life. I was like, I don't want to play this. Put Zelda on. I was like, I don't want to play this at the moment. Um, everything I put on. I ended up playing Hot Wheels. That was the best antidote. I put Hot Wheels on and I had to drive about and that was sort of okay. Right. Um, but in the end, we just sort of turned it off and watched Seinfeld. <laughs> And I was like, yeah. And then the next day, it's kind of like, oh, it's a shame. So we've been feeling sort of wistful. Wow, that's <laughs> really interesting. It's good. Um, yeah, we got really attached to the game, to the music. As I said, you know, the soundtrack's just so amazing. We've been humming the tunes all the time. Um, so it just it just feels a little bit like there's, there's a bit of something missing because we got so used to it and so used to because it's just such a massive epic quest. Hmm. It's just almost surreal that it stopped especially with how elongated the end was. And when it finally ended, it's kind of like a happy but wistful sigh. Yes. <sighs> so, yeah, like a, it's like when you finish an amazing book, it's like you lost a friend. <laughs> it probably sounds really sad, but I loved the game, man. It was really good, really good. Maybe Persona 4, but not for a while. Not for a <laughs> while. Um and your offer of the Vita, uh, that was really generous, but it doesn't output us to the telly, does it? So I don't think I'll bother. I no, need to play it on the telly. I think the only way you could get it on the TV is if you had bought one of those PlayStation TV things, that you could then do it that yeah. way. But, yeah. I played it, PS2 version. Right, right. But that isn't the golden version, but I don't know. I don't know if I can go back. I don't know. At the moment, it's it's too soon. It's too it's, soon. It's to... too soon. But what about Zelda? I mean, I mean, the way you're feeling about Persona is the way that I was feeling about Zelda. You know, after I finished it. But thankfully, Zelda still had some more to give. You know, just this week in the commutes that I've been having, I've been playing more Zelda. I just um, fired up fired up the the switch on the train, and I've just been getting more shrines because kind of Nicola's putting me to shame because she's got ninety eight shrines now. So Ooh. she's done all of her divine beasts, and she's done ninety eight shrines. And she was like, "How many shrines have you done?" I'm like, eighty. And she's like, "The ninety, you know." And it's just like I was like, <laughs> "Oh," so I was like, "Right, I need to go." And then, of course, as I'm playing Forza or what well, I've well I've been playing this week, I've been kind of jotting down where to where her shrines are. So I've been cheating slightly, but um, doing those later. So I've been trying to unlock some more shrines and just really enjoying it. But yeah, I'll, I'll go on. Sorry, no, I was going to say, but the way you're feeling was exactly how I felt afterwards. There was nothing that matched that, you know, including Horizon Zero Dawn for me. There was nothing that matched the high that I had from Zelda. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's, a, I don't know if. It's a, I'll, it's not that I sort of think any the other games are not good anymore. No, no, it's not. It's just that so I was used so to them. yeah, I was just so um, used to Persona, and I and because I, I played it for so many hours straight to finish it as well, because it sort of it hooks you and it doesn't stop. Yeah. You know, it's just you got to carry on because it's always it's it makes you think that it's going to end all the way through the end of it, which is like as I say, you know, hours and hours and hours. You think it's going to finish all the time, so it's so. For you to think that, you can imagine it's quite exciting it's yeah. to keep you on that precipice for yeah. so long. And I, I was just, I, it just, I, how can I put this? It was just kind of, as I say, I just needed to decompress. I was just like completely gamed out, if you yeah. like. Yeah. And it was just like, I think you're right. You know, it was like this isn't Persona, so I'm not interested. It, I, I bet I could have played more Persona. You're right. Mm. And nothing else, nothing else felt right. Nothing else felt right. Even Zelda. Um, I had a little bit of a, a walk about, and I was like, "Oh, this is a beautiful game," but I'm just not ready for it right now. So yeah, I've had a few days now, and Zelda's still there. Don't get me wrong, but I'm, I'm slowing. I've been slowing down on Zelda because it's the only game I've got on my Switch, and I don't want to complete it. So luckily, Persona's distracted me from that, which is great. So I've still got <laughs> Zelda, and it's still up there. But yeah, I've been at a sort of at a crossroads really, because I've got I've got a few games there in the you know to to choose from. Yeah, but nothing quite felt right, and you know what? I got some pleasure before just from I just put Minecraft on, and I was just having to go on Minecraft from my old save that I, my survival save that I haven't played for years, and I, I sort of remembered what I, what I was doing on it, and I just started. I was like, oh, I need some iron, 
and I just started looking for iron and went down my mind with my pickaxe and started looking for iron. Just one more block, one, just one more block, just one more block. <laughs> and I was just like, ah, oh, this is okay. This is therapy. <laughs> it's it's quite nice, isn't it? Just to kind of you know, on Sunday you're you're like this, but on Sunday I stuck a podcast on. Um, we were doing some DIY, um, but in the morning I was up early and I and Minecraft was free this weekend, so you could play it for free um, oh. on Xbox One. So I um I just downloaded Minecraft on Xbox One and started playing it oh wow cool. and it was did you like it? I did it was well the, the thing was I really enjoyed it I made my little I made a little house you know I kind of there was you start I made my little house went through the tutorial got some achievements um uh, which was really cool yeah. um got now some, I see the real reason yeah yeah got some achievements did all of the kind of thing that was like well you need to do this you need to do that so I was like I like this that's really good and then it was like okay off you go you know go up those stairs and at that point, I just went up the stairs, and there was so much up there that I was just like, "What do I do?" And I, I was like, "I need Daz. I need Daz. Where's Daz?" Uh, man, well, was, I wouldn't. Yeah, you'd have been Daz. I said, "I'm playing Persona." <laughs> but yeah, it'd be great if you did get it because we could collaborate, man. It'd be so awesome to hook up and and do stuff because there's there's so much to it, you know. There's the survival bit, which is awesome. Mm. That's the way, that's how I started playing it. Where you start with nothing and you've got health um, and hunger and stuff and everything you build, you've got to work for. You know, from just surviving the first night, you've got mm. to work for it. You know, you've got to get the wood and find some coal quick so that you've got light, so that when you dig a place, to, so the only way you'll survive really at night is if you find a place to hide. You can't see without a torch, and it just it just escalates from that. It's like you've got a torch right now, we'll build a crafting table. Now we've got a crafting table, what can we build? We can build a, a pickaxe or an axe to chop some more trees down to get some more wood, and it just kind of goes on and on and on. Yeah. And everything you've got, you get in that mode, you know you've worked for, and that's awesome. But then creative mode, which I wrongly used to think is kind of cheating sam's opened my eyes to this it's great how he opened my eyes to this when he was three um creative mode is just a wonderful sandbox mm. you know to do anything you want and i've talked about this before we've got this big map where we've been building together sam and i since he was able to play games at like three or two and a half or whatever it is and so this air this land is representative of sort of milestones in his development as well mm. um but it's brilliant, man, because you don't have to worry about hunger and all this. You've got access to everything. So you can think, like me and you could think, what are we inspired? What do we want to build? And if we decided to build, I don't know, a pyramid or whatever we decided, if we decided to build some kind of Gears of War fortress, we could just start doing it block by block together. And it's, it's, I tell you, it's really sort of therapeutic to do it. And you get a great feeling of satisfaction as it's coming together. And when it's finished, it's fantastic too. But actually... The fun's in the building. You know, like they say a lot of times, you know, it's in the journey, isn't it? Mm. The fun's in the journey rather than the completion. Once it's done, it's fantastic, but then it's kind of like, the fun's over because it's done. But it would be great to, if you ever get it, it would be pretty good. Are you tempted for the Switch version that's coming out? Or is it, no, it's out now. Yeah, twenty yeah, pound nineteen yeah. ninety nine. The Switch version's out. I wasn't sure. I was, And that's why I kind of played it. That's why I thought, oh, it's free, so I'm going to have a quick go. And just to see what it was like, because I thought, well, maybe the Switch version, but will that be a bit small, do you think, on, on that screen? Because I quite enjoyed it. I quite enjoyed it on, on the big TV, um, kind of with, with my Xbox joypad. I quite liked that. It was quite it was quite good fun. Yeah, I don't know. It might be a bit small. It certainly probably would be in, in split screen. Um but it's good. I've got a couple of I've got a couple of furnaces. I made them. I put my crafting table inside oh, my house. Cool. Made a couple yeah. of furnaces. Made put some windows in. Put a couple of torches either side of the door. You know, this place was fancy. You know, it was really cool because it was telling me it was getting dark. I was like, right, I'm going to stick torches all around my house. You know, stuck them to the wall. Um, and it was just like I was really enjoying it. But like I say, I went upstairs. I think that was the same time as Nicola started to. Um, to wake up and surface in the house because I went up went up those big stone stairs and that's when you you had more there was a, it was a bit about breeding animals and I was like oh hello viva pinata <laughs> you know and I was like oh and uh, there was there was some stuff like that and I was like oh this is quite interesting I quite like it but then um, like I say then the DIY began so I had to finish yeah I think it almost that tutorial almost throws too much at you at once even though you, I don't think you have to do every every bit of it. But in the old days, back in the day, like you know, you, you didn't have a tutorial in Minecraft when it first came out. You just really, you just yeah, you just left to yourself when it wow. first came out, and you just had to figure it out. I mean, I went online to understand how to survive for mm. the first night because I didn't have a clue what I was doing. But once you, and also it, on the PC as well, you had to sort of in the in the grid to craft things. You had to sort of put the things in the right places to be able to get the the item. 
Right, it's right. sort of simplified on the Xbox. But um, yeah, the tutorial is really, really useful. But like you say, you know, it's like you can do this, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. You're just kind of like, what, what am I supposed to do? Yes. Whereas I think before, when you figured it out for yourself, it's like, right, you were just, just like, right, you wouldn't even know about farming mm. or getting animals and stuff. All you were concerned about was survival and probably getting weapons to stay alive. And then as you get more and more resources and become more and more confident, you start building things that are sort of a bit better, and then you sort of make a bit an area safe, and then you can start building something that looks nice, you know, start to make things look nice. And then there's creative mode. And I remember I remember doing a farm on mine. I've got a little farm with sheep and stuff because I wanted to get different coloured wool so that I could decorate things nicer. And to get different coloured wool, you've got to sort of breed sheep and um, use dyes to uh, dye their fleeces. And I remember working on that for ages, just like, oh, right, okay, this is how you do it. And you've got to feed them and stuff and lure them into the pen. And it's just really deep. And I was like, when I started, I had no idea that that was even part of the game. Wow, wow. I can't believe you've never played Viva Piñata, if if you like that. (laughs) Yeah, I know, maybe I should... uh, Dust it off. Just I'm waiting for the next one. That's the thing. I can't go back. It's like Persona Four. I, right. I just have to wait for the next Viva. Yeah. Do you think there's one coming? Oh God! I wake up every day hoping that. Would that be, <laughs> would, would that be number four? No, it'd be three. It'd be three, would it? We've had two. Yes. Wow. I think that's what. Uh, I think that's what we're waiting for at E3. This is why Sea of Thieves is taking a while because they've got half the team <laughs> working on this secret project of Viva Pinata Three for Scorpio. I would. I would <laughs> You'd run through the streets of Tunbridge Wells. <laughs> Absolutely at ten o'clock, at eleven o'clock when it's being filmed when it's being streamed in the UK. If they were like, and here and the theme tune and they're like, Oh my god, you would just hear me kind of running around the streets going, It's happening banging on everybody's door. It's happening, it's happening. I've got <laughs> I'd run all the way to Tri to, to Tricross and start kissing people at rare, so watch out watch out. Be, watch out. You better just, pucker you've just, up. Ca- you've just cancelled it now. <laughs> I, 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 you yeah, James, image. Is, James is sending an email as he types, going, "Don't just cancel it. He's going to come and kiss us. He's going to come and kiss us." <laughs> you, you've conjured a picture in my mind of sort of a Christmas Carol when Scrooge wakes up on the morning and he's so he opens the door and he's so full of joy. You boy, get me the biggest turkey in the shop. Three of pinata three is being made. <laughs> It'd be like, it's a wonderful life, you know, when he's just yeah. running through. I'd be like, hello, Baker, it's coming. God bless us, everyone. <laughs> Copies of Viva Piñata 3 for everybody. Uh, I forgot what we were talking about. Uh, Persona 5. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so what, what, have you been, what have you been playing? So I have been playing, I have been playing, I've been playing um, Injustice. Injustice 2. Um, we were sent a code by um, the good folks of Warner Brother Games um, for Injustice 2 on the PlayStation 4. Um, I'd also, at the same time, um, I forgot, but I had it in my Boomerang queue as well. Um, so I've been doing my own little bit of digital foundry uh, where I've been playing Injustice on both um, PlayStation 4 and also Xbox One as well. I'm going to send it back on the Xbox One when I've finished the the story mode there. Um, but the first, I mean, the first thing is this game is just awesome. I'm absolutely loving Injustice. It's a great beat 'em up. But for me, the beat 'em up, the beat 'em up side of it, the the actual fighting is secondary because for me, it's all about this this story that just doesn't need to be there. But it's just such a great DC story. So it, it and it and it not only is it a really good story, but it looks absolutely stunning. The first thing that I loved was I, I, I got like I say I got the code and it was a couple of days early, but I managed to play it anyway. It was before release date, um, but I managed to, it was still active on the PlayStation Network. So I fired it up on the PlayStation Network, and before I could read about it or anything like that, um, I just fired it up and I thought, right, let's let's have a go. At this and first the first thing that made me smile from ear to ear was the HDR popped. So HDR on PlayStation Four and Xbox One as well um, popped. So I got that kind of little thing came up on my. TV, it was like HDR, and I was like, oh, oh yeah, here we go. Oh, this is serious. <laughs> exactly, it's like, oh, this is, the, I like this, there's something I like about that, you know, because obviously we've, we've, we've 
we've invested in all of that technology so when that actually is being put into play when you see that hdr there's just something quite nice about it um so it pops and it looks glorious and you are instantly kind of into this story now i never really played injustice one i read some of the comic books i'm aware my brother-in-law um loves the comic books so he's kind of filled me in on the injustice um storyline um but it's 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 an alternate it's an alternate DC reality um, where they have just literally had a whole bunch of fun in there. Um, but it's such a great storyline. And what happens is you 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 have these kind of cut scenes um, where you could have right at the start you could have Batman talking to Clark Kent, you know, talking to Superman, and then suddenly the perspective will just change just a little bit. The camera will pan round, and you're in. You know, you're now kind of standing there opposite each other, ready to duke off. And it is just amazing the way that it does that you know the way that it just goes from story to right now let's fight you're just sitting there just enjoying this story enjoying kind of what's unfolding in front of you um and then suddenly you're fighting and then it's just awesome and as you start going through it's kind of like i say it starts off with batman versus superman and and in the in the tutorial that i kind of went through in the tutorial you um you kick Superman and you as Batman and Superman's kind of all glowing with green because he's just they had some kryptonite fired at him um and then you kick him through the cinema all the way through the foyer of the cinema through the cinema out into the alleyway and I'm just like this is just amazing and this happens quite a lot so each of the characters each of the the characters in Injustice so you're talking Batman Superman Flash etc have like a special move so when you're fighting away your meter builds up in the bottom corner um and then you can press the buttons you press the buttons and you activate your special and if if you connect with the other person i've done it a couple of times where i've activated the special and it hasn't really connected it hasn't really done it it just makes me look foolish you know you can imagine the flash going well i didn't mean to do that anyway you know but it's <laughs> but if you connect it's just glorious like the flash he will grab his his opponent and he will race through time to uh, a sphinx, throw you against the th- sphinx, and then take you, and then race through time again, and throw you against a T-Rex. And then you're going so fast in space that you actually kind of meet yourself again, and then he punches both of you. It's just glorious. These things are just, they make me laugh every time. Batman does this... Um, what was the thing in Metal Gear Solid, the last Metal Gear Solid, like the fault? Was it Fulton? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he basically he attaches something, Fultons your your uh, your opponent out. You go up in the <laughs> sky. The Batwing takes you up, throws you up. So there's the really nice shot of the Batwing against the moon, and then as you drop down, he fire he shoots you. Like the the Batwing fires guns at you, and then you land, and then Batman punches you just once more for the hell of it. <laughs> you know, you know, it's just and it's full of these things, and it is just amazing so that i can really enjoy myself and because i i started on normal because i'm like i'm good at this i'm fine but started getting beaten quite a lot so i've actually dropped it down to easy not very easy but just easy because i just want to get it's all like i say fighting is secondary in this game because the game is just amazing i absolutely love it you're loving the story then Mm, absolutely the story is fantastic i mean the the injustice one i won't spoil injustice too but injustice one um if i get this right it's that the joker tricked superman and and what he basically did was he he tricked him to to say that it was he thought the joker was in front of him and had done something um and it turned so he punched the joker but he actually in turn it something happened and then he he what he was he was seeing the joker but what it actually was was lois lane a pregnant lois lane so he had basically just punched lois lane and killed her so superman was like just distraught ends up killing the joker um ends up killing so then obviously the rest of injustice one is about batman and and the rest of the justice league taking superman down but then uh, there's some that side with with batman such as wonder woman and side with superman such as wonder woman etc and there was like a whole roster and then they end up 
as we start with this, Superman is in a prison. You know, he's in a prison with uh, he's he's there, there's no sun, so he's not powerful, and and it's just really cool. And Batman is just like so. There's it's there's still a rift in the in the DC universe. You have some people who are behind Batman, and and some people are not. Harley Quinn now that Joker's out of the way, she's still Harley Quinn, um, but she's kind of uh, she's working with Batman now, but it's still a little bit crazy. You know, and it's it's all of these things that they they kind of do with the universe that just i just absolutely love i just think it's absolutely fantastic yeah i played the first injustice game mm. um and i really i really like it i think it's great i haven't, haven't played this one yet um but it sounds like it's a fantastic evolution of what they did or everything they did right mm. with the first injustice game because up till that game i don't think anyone had, had been brave enough to sort of tie a story around a beat up in this way the nether the nether realms have done and it's just so refreshing, I thought, and so fantastic to go from a heavy story laden cutscene sort of seamlessly into the into the battle. Yes. Yes. And I just loved that in the first one and from what I'm reading and from what you've told me, you know, it sounds like it's just it's just like as you said, especially from a good sequel, it's just even better this time. Yeah. And and I just loved that because before that it was always very you sort of accepted it with a beat 'em up. It was like, yeah, yeah, you know, they'd tie on a, a little story, like on Soul Calibur. They'd have like one sentence before the battle. Yes, or um, Tekken. Yeah, or Tekken, and then you'd get some strange sort of just bonkers ending that you mm. didn't have any clue about. You know, you're just like, oh well, okay. And then if you did some history, you'd find out on the internet that like, there's been a feud for years, but you had no idea. No. Um, and I love the way that they wrap it around this this story. It's just. Uh, I just think it's genius, and it looks it looks really great. And there's more than just uh, the story mode, isn't there? There's a whole load of modes, to, loads yes. of value in the game, isn't there? Absolutely. So one of the so one of the options you have is the kind of multiverse option. Now in the DC law, there is um, there are many multiverses. There's many different. There's Earth two, and it then it goes up to now it goes up to fifty two. But there were at one point there was infinite, and we had a crisis on infinite Earth was a storyline, um, and it basically so so on Earth get this right on earth 16 batman is actually bruce wayne's father um who came into the comic books just recently you know so so the bruce was actually killed in the alley and so thomas wayne is the batman you know there's there's one where batman uh, where superman sorry landed in russia instead of smallville so he's now oh. a russian superman you know and there's all these things that they used to call like elseworlds um but they're now called a multiverse and you can do this so you can mess around so you could be um you can be green lantern from earth 7 against you know and you can also change up so every time you finish a game or finish a round you get given like a boom box and that allows you to unlock that boom cube sorry and then that allows you to unlock that and then you get maybe a shader or um, a, a different hat or a different helmet or a different outfit um, for your character so you can completely randomize all these characters up you don't see all okay. of this in the story obviously because there's a cut scene and it would just jump out and it would look different and it look odd um but in the multiverse thing and there's it that's almost like you know you have to get four stars to carry on to the next one and then you're leveling up your character and all this sort of stuff and then you can just continually switch it out um but it's that but that alone is just kind of i just keep playing that and that's yeah, just, leveling that's just up really... your character in mm. a beat em up is, is really cool isn't it mm. is it do these um sort of augments or aesthetic changes are they merely aesthetic or do they sort of boost your power as well or no there's there's just... power boosts as well and there's um there's also on on the multiplayer um there's also power boost there but you i haven't gone online and got my ass handed to me um <laughs> but there's you can go online and you can opt to have a a game where you're all kind of powered up or you could say like no no buffs you know and just have a proper oh, okay. kind of, so which is really good so you could just say um you know i want you to see my i want you to see my crazy batman outfit there's all different colors but i don't want um, I don't want all the power up, so you can choose all of that. And the online, you know, it, by all accounts, it, it's it's very it's very good. And the and the and the land code is really good, and there's no latency, and it just plays really well. But I mean, one of the things I absolutely love about this is not only the HDR, but on the PlayStation Four Pro, because like I say, I've been switching between the Pro and Xbox One S. Um, 
So Xbox One S, it runs at HDR, but it's pushing it out at about, um, I think it's uh, 16 by 9. So it's it's 1600 by 900, so it's almost like 900p, um, mm-hmm. but running at 60 frames a second, a very smooth 60 frames a second. Um, yeah. uh, but there, the PS4 sits at 1080p, um, still running at 60 frames, but the PlayStation 4 Pro pushes it at uh, 2060 by 1440 and looks delicious you know it just looks so good where i'll find myself going yeah i'll play it on the playstation i've just got to give that i've got to send that boomerang gang back because you know i'm just like uh, i think tekken's my next one that comes out in a couple of weeks time i'll send that back you know because it just runs so well on the playstation 4 pro and looks absolutely stunning you know it just yeah. looks really really good so that's that's the one to plump for if, you, yes. if you've got if you've got a PlayStation 4 absolutely or if you've got a Pro if you've got a PlayStation 4 Pro you have a, a HDI enabled TV then it's a no brainer you know the if you're into beat 'em ups or just into the DC universe then uh, Injustice 2 really is a, is a great game to play um, and like I say I'm just having a ton of fun going through and the the chapters are just fantastic you know so far I've played as Batman I've played as um, Harley Quinn I've played as um, their Swamp Thing came into it you know every now and then they, they introduce like they bring in a new character and I'm like oh I can't believe they've done Swamp Thing you know a Blue <laughs> Beetle and then some of the junctions when you're playing through the story mode you get to choose so at one point there's firestorm or blue beetle and you get to choose which one you want and then the other one just kind of steps back into the background so which i which i really like and, I, and there's sometimes where i kind of i played as catwoman and and i was like oh no this i'm not gelling with catwoman so i just changed to cyborg um and it was just absolutely superb and all of the characters look really good and the the face animation the the kind of the movement around the mouth is absolutely spot on you know it looks really good it just looks absolutely fantastic i love it i just absolutely i didn't i didn't think i was i knew i was going to enjoy it because obviously i'm a big dc comic book nerd but i didn't think that i would just enjoy it this much and just have this much fun yeah it seems it seems like it's really good um, I think they did the right thing with regarding the Xbox One version because if you're going to make a sacrifice somewhere, I think they did the right thing to keep the res down mm-hmm. and the frame rate up. You know, <laughs> that's definitely what you need in in a beat em up in a game like this, isn't it? In a beat em up, yes. Um, but I'm, I'm I'm glad it I'm glad it's good. I'm glad it's good. Um, it seems to have gone got a good critical reception. Right, right. So it's, it's reviewing well then. It's reviewing really well, yeah. Right, right. And uh, you know, this means that you'll get more fun because hopefully there'll be an Injustice Three. Yes, from from the Mortal Kombat guys, I think this is sort of better than the Mortal Kombat formula. You know the way they've done this. Oh yeah, absolutely, no doubt. You know, it's it, you have these rich characters. You have these really kind of rich characters. Lots of backstory. Like I say, they're doing it. It's slightly different. You know, it's a different universe, different multiverse. So you you can they can play in their sandbox as they have done. You know, the Injustice um, comic book has been going for well, since the first one, and and that just runs alongside. You know, whenever a new comic book day is, you know, the once a month you get a new Injustice comic, and they've been doing that for for years. And 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 it just sits there you know at no point has it ever crossed over i think it may have crossed over at once when they had um kind of one of those things where they have all of the different universes and that was like last year when some of the injustice characters kind of crossed over um but i would like to see you know there's some there's inevitable dlc are coming and there's lots of characters um that i would love to see added to this universe and you know and and into this style i just think it would be absolutely superb I'd love to see people yeah. like like the Watchmen. Um, I'd love to see the Watchmen oh. kind of included in this. I just think that would just be absolutely stunning. That would be amazing. Um, mm. Almost they could almost get the, get away with their own game for the Watchmen. I suppose not. It's not fifteen, is there? You need fifteen fighters, really. But yeah, that would be so cool. Um, but then it, I was sort of thinking when you said that, I was thinking that would be really cool. But you want some characters for the next game so you can't they can't bring them all out can they because it'd be like oh next game is like there'd be no surprises but i've seen some clips of this um like swamp thing i saw on a clip mm. and like you say you know i just thought it looked stunning i thought it looked so polished yes just i mean injustice looks i think just i might have to put injustice on again because i'm in a sulk i haven't got this one so i'll put injustice on just to have a look at it again mm-hmm. um and start and start to learn again for the millionth time, um, but this just 
I mean, Injustice looked really good, but this just—you can tell they've up the ante. It looks just—it just looks fine. And like you say, the facial animations look amazing. Um, I don't know. I haven't seen many many fighting games that look as good as this one. If I'm honest, I just think it looks beautiful. And if the fighting a- aspects stand up, which presumably they do, because it works really well in the first game, and I can't—I'm not—I'm not hearing any reports that that's that they've broken that. No. And with the, with the story content, with this—I nearly say metaverse. I think that's a persona thing. And with the—is it multiverse? <laughs> yes. You say? Yes. With the, with this multiverse option, which which makes me think is that. I think it was Soul Calibur 2 that introduced sort of a quest line mm, and you, mm. but you simply just sort of followed a dotted line and there was a bit of text that explained what you were doing and you went through adventures and this reminds me of sort of that coming and be evolving into the, the current gener- generation mm. so it just sounds it sounds really interesting um, it sounds like a good package plus so even as a single because I'm kind of a single player guy really but I, I like beat em ups and I like but I do play single player or I used to play them you know Couch co-op, mm. not really, not really so much online because it's it's too embarrassing. Um, when I win, not really. <laughs> when I lose, <laughs> all the time. Um, when you rage quit, yeah, yeah, exactly. But this, you know, we, we've got recently that, that Street Fighter Five uh, game, and it seemed that that was quite one note in in what it gave you. Mm. Whereas this has got layers of content. It's got layers to keep the single player interested and probably gaming for. Well, it sounds like many, many hours, mm. and then you've got the online on top of it, and then you've got online with buffs. But I was, I was about to say when you answered the question that I want about the uneven playing field. But it's got options to mitigate that. Mm. Everyone can have an, an even playing field. You can add the buffs on. You can get all these these wild and wonderful loot crates or uh, boom, boom cubes, boom cubes, box. yeah, <laughs> boom cubes. Yeah, like it's, 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 absolutely, it just sounds good. It's, it's, it sounds like a good package. It kind of gives you that, you know, when like uh, with Overwatch or or with Halo or Gears, you know, when you unlock that um, that bonus box and you hold your a, you know, hold down A or hold down X, and then it just kind of rumbles and then breaks open, and then it gives you, or you know, you got um, Flash from Earth Three's um, cow, you know, or something like that, and you're just like, oh god, this is amazing, I love it. And then, <laughs> and then you know, I went through the shaders on Flash, and there was the old style, the Golden Age Flash. And, and things like that and I was like oh that list looks so good and it really was I'm just like generally just kind of sitting on my sofa nerding out over this because it's just so good I was really <laughs> loving it I think if ever there was a game that was perfect for you if ever there was a beat up that was right <laughs> on your street it's got to be this <laughs> absolutely all they need to do now is loop in Marvel you know and have DC versus Marvel and then that would just be that's the only game I'm going to play forever you know it's just like that's wow. it done yeah, beat 'em up stroke RPG. Yes, absolutely. MMO RPG that just goes on forever. <laughs> but it's you know, and they could do that because they did that once in the nineties where they had uh, an, a DC Marvel crossover. Oh wow, did they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they said it would never happen. They said it would, and they did. They had a, it was a DC. They had basically DC and Marvel. They there was a rip in the space time continuum, and they kind of crossed, and then they had they it joined, it merged, and they had comics called Amalgam Comics, where you would have someone that was like part Wolverine, part Batman. Wow, and that was really cool. I collected. I've, I've got all of those. <laughs> I've, I've got a real highbrow question for you regarding yeah. com- the comic book universes. Um, who's best, DC or Marvel? It's a tough one. They have they have ebbs and flows. You know they have they really do. They have good times and bad times. You know sometimes uh, for a majority of my earlier life, I was 2000 AD and DC. You know they were the two kind of comic books I absolutely loved. Um, I always tried to get into Marvel, but Marvel seemed like if you weren't there from the ground up, um, you could never get in. So I would pick up an X Men comic book, and they would always be referring back to previous episodes and things that had happened. And I was like, I don't understand what's going on here. Um, and then they did something called the Ultimates, uh, which is kind of very much kind of what our uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe is kind of loosely based on. But they did Ultimates, and what they did was they restarted Avengers, um, Spider Man, uh, uh, X Men. They restarted them all from from one. And at that point, I jumped in, and they just they built the story up in this Ultimate Universe, and then. 
when all of these movies started to kind of hit and when the, all of the movies started to be big, they just, what Marvel now do, and DC do it as well, but they reboot every now and then because they always think that someone's someone's comic book, I think Stan Lee always said that someone's comic book is there. There's always, a comic book is someone's first comic book, so you need to make sure they understand what's going on, what the universe is. Um, and that's very much, that's very apparent in the Marvel universe right now that they will just have these restarts. DC have just had a, a, a one like that as well because like we're on batman number 22 right now um where they've restarted it so if you were brand new and you've been watching these movies you could pick up these comic books and and you would be able to jump in so i mean my favorite characters are kind of batman and superman i do like do like those and green lantern i do like those as kind of characters but i do have um a, a big love for the marvel universe as well Thanks for that, mate. That's such a full answer. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I thought I asked that thinking you just say, "Don't be silly, mate. You can't choose." Yeah. I, I thought it's simple as that, but to get such an articulation, <laughs> that was that was wonderful. I'm really happy. Thank you. Uh, um, one thing about the game um, that, I'll, that I'll mention or that I'll put to you is this character DLC. Now, I suppose as long as there isn't an overpowered character that you have to pay for, and that's an even playing field. Maybe it's not a problem, but do you think it's a little bit underhanded for the completionists out there, or the or the the passionate comic fans? I don't know who who it is that's going. To, which characters are going to come out? Um, do you think it's a little bit cheeky to sort of withhold them on a full price game, or do you think it's fair enough? I think it's a little bit cheeky. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Absolutely, I think it's a little bit cheeky. Um, if you are, if suddenly you were, um, if suddenly you were like, oh, and here's Watchmen. You know, here's Rorschach. Here's, oh, here's Doctor yeah, Manhattan. Yeah. Here they are. You're like, why didn't you just release those? Why didn't you just have a proper storyline in it? Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not even know, a comic You should be fan, making but... three instead of. Yeah, yeah. If they brought out Watchmen, it'd be like even me. That would reach me. If I bought the game and then they added Watchmen, I'd be like. I want them people, mm. you know. So I think it's uh, well. It's quite interesting. You know, it's it's the a business why, decision, but yeah. I mean, the reason why I mentioned Watchmen is because I've just finished a four-part crossover between Batman and the Flash um, called the Button, and in the Batcave, Bruce Wayne finds the comedian's uh, button uh, with uh, with the little blood spatter, so the big red, the smiley face. Oh with the yeah, blood yeah, yeah. So he finds that, and then the rest of it is about that, and it, and it finishes on a very on a very Watchman note right at the end, and now we've got to wait till November, which could potentially, could potentially um, be um, Watchman versus Superman. That sounds awesome. I know it's incredible. I was I was on the train just nerding out. <laughs> you know? it's just, I wanted to talk. To, I'm just going to talk to the old lady sitting next to me. Going, have you seen this? Look, Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> it's blue. Yes, dear. Look at the blue glow. <laughs> but yeah, though it's very cool. It's very cool. Maybe oh, wow. we'll read Watchmen again. For about the 80th time. Wow, it is a good book. See, it's a comic I've read, and I loved that. I really loved it. Once I'd got, that was the first one that I'd read since reading comics when I was little. And once I once I retuned myself to reading that that sort of comic style, mm. man, that it was thought that it was amazing. It was amazing. And then I watched the film, and it just wasn't. It was good. I thought the film was good in its own right, but at the book, the comic book or the graphic novel, it was different. Yes. It was a lot. It was a lot different um, in its. In the motivations and, and what actually happened, mm. and it was kind of like huh. I was like, "Yeah, it, why did they change it?" <laughs> um, I don't know whether it was special effects budget or whatever, but yeah, it was amazing. The um, the comic I actually was drew, was drawn to the graphic novel because I think of the hype of the film coming out. Right, right. And then I I read the the, the novel, and then I read a few others, but I'm nowhere near to your caliber. I've only read a few. I've read probably said this before: Watchmen, Kickass One and Two. I read those, mm. um, and Scott Pilgrim, and that's probably it. And you sent me some comic books, which I need to. And I need to read them, um, yes. and I'll get around to it. It's really a, there's no excuse, really. I need to make the time. Yes, I mean it's quite interesting. I, you know, again, the Zack Snyder Watchmen movie is is good. It's a, it's a good movie, but you're right. There are some very there's some decisions that they made there. Um, I have an ultimate Blu-ray. I have the ultimate edition on Blu-ray, which has the movie, and then as you remember from the book, there is the um, there's the graphic novel that's in the graphic novel. Um, so they have the black flag kind of graphic novel, and the ultimate edition I've got every now and then it cuts to an animated 
animated um, movie of that graphic novel within the Watchmen graphic novel, um, and it's just it's it's amazing. I've watched it so many times. I just really enjoy that. You know, I just really enjoy the, the fact that I'm watching it, and then it cuts to the 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 boy and the guy selling the newspapers, and they go, "Oh yeah, though it's just arrived. It's just arrived," and then it goes then into an animated movie um, during the during Zack Snyder's Watchmen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, and I just love it. But they are actually making an animated, they're making a R rated, um, they're making an adult animated version of The Watchmen. So, what I would say is, or offer to say, is that the true version then? If it, it's, yeah. it's going gonna, it's gonna to properly, is this going to properly um, have the replicate ending? The book? Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Alan Moore will hate all of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow <laughs> so anyway that's enough comic book talk but Injustice 2 um, out now on everything on Playstation uh, Playstation 4 Xbox One and I believe it's out on PC as well oh cool it's either out yeah, on it is, PC it or it's coming PC. on PC yeah one or the other but it's coming. if it's not out it is coming to PC mm. yeah but it's absolutely fantastic and like I say I'm going to be playing that for a long time and it's just it's such a great game just to kind of pick up and have a quick play so I have I mean I've, I've been playing more Forza um, I've been I've unlocked all of the races now in Forza I'm, I'm almost at that the big one trying to get enough stars to get to that that big one so I think I've got about 88 stars of 100 um, and I'm just I'm still loving that so much um, but Injustice is that game that I'm just kind of if ever I've got a moment to game it's like Injustice goes on yeah, it's top. I think it's top the charts, hasn't it? As well, really. Oh, that's yeah. really cool. That's really yeah, so good. It's, it's sold really well. People are hearing or people are desiring the game, and yeah, it's uh, it's the number one game this week. Injustice Two, topping the charts on the all formats chart uh, for UK. Uh, it's at number one, and on the individual the individual formats chart, it's holding one and two for uh, PS4 and Xbox. Wow. Yeah. So. Many more people agree with you, Anthony. <laughs> it's yes, a top game. Indeed. That's, that's, really good. that's really good to know. That's really good to know. Um, so let's jump into the news section. Um, and in this week's news section, we have Destiny 2 um, gameplay has been revealed. We've got even more sequels aplenty. And also, um, Xbox is out the gate with those uh, free games, the free games for June. Um, but the first piece of news, Daz, is with you. It is, and this is for... Um, PlayStation people and the PlayStation player, the PlayStation Store is offering creators' picks at the, now, which is pretty good. Um, this unfortunately doesn't seem to have hit the UK yet, right? But if you are over the pond in the US of A and you go into the PlayStation Store, you can have a look at the creators of games uh, or people in the industries, their picks of the games that they love to help advise you. If you're stuck for a game, you're thinking, "Oh, I wonder what to play," you can see. What, for instance, Shuhei Yoshida likes, what right. his recommendations are. So when you go to the store, you can see this uh, this area called the Creators, and their tag their tagline for that is the industry's most creative minds pick their favourite games, mm-hmm. um, and you can just browse through, see somebody that you like, and have a look at what their picks are, which I quite like. It's a little bit like the uh, Curators thing on Steam, except on Steam it's just sort of Joe Public, whereas here it's actually industry people. Oh wow, that's really cool. Yeah. So if I click on Shuhei, for instance, yeah, and let's see what he's what his uh, recommendations are. So and let's see if we like these: Horizon Zero Dawn, yeah, um, yeah a good game. Uncharted Four, Dark Souls Three, uh, Let It Die. I haven't heard of, to be honest, but maybe it's worth looking at if uh, you know if Shuhei recommends it. Last Guardian, Final Fantasy Fifteen, Neo, Journey Inside, Rocket League, Guacamole, uh, Sound Shapes. Rezo Gun and Downwell. Uh, that's his selection. That's what Shuhei recommends you should get get into. I think that's a good good selection. Absolutely. Yeah, you've heard of Let It Die. Do you remember I was telling you about the um, skateboarding um, death, uh, where you've oh. got to kind of level up. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's yeah. free to play. It's free to play as well. Yeah, I have heard of it. Yeah, I apologise. Yeah, so that's a really good list. Really nice. It, it, that's a good list from Shuhei. You've got a list from Psionics, makers of. Uh, <laughs> Rocket League. Thank you. My mind went completely bad. I just said the name a minute ago. <laughs> so what do what do Psionics recommend? Well, number one, Rocket League. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> uh, Blood Bowl, which I thought always sounded interesting. NBA Two K Seventeen, Ollie Ollie, which is a good game. Ollie Ollie Two. Mega, they're all sports games. Mega Baseball, Sports Friends, and, and Video Ball. Um, let's pick someone else. One more person out of all these that we've got. Who've we got? 
somebody, a person, not a company. Let's have an actual person. Um, Sid Schumann. Yeah, okay, let me find him. Or, 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 or Yassi Orano Ono. He's the guy who did uh, Street Fighter, isn't he? He might be. Yeah, click on him and it'll tell us. Yes. Executive producer of the Street Fighter series. Yep. Oh, fantastic. Um, go on then, you, you read him out, because I'm, I'm looking for him at the moment. He's the guy who looks like Blanca. He's the crazy guy that looks like Blanca at the top. Oh, he's, at the top. I've, yes. gone, I've gone off the top. Yeah, His picks are Street Fighter Five. Obviously, Ultimate Marvel versus You're Capcom not allowed to Three, pick <laughs> Resident Evil Seven. Wow, he's a real Capcom boy, isn't he? Um, Destiny: The Collection, uh, Witcher Three, Uncharted Four, Battlefield One, um, Diablo Three, uh, Titanfall Two. It sounds like football scores, doesn't it? Diablo <laughs> Three, Titanfall Two, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Twentieth Edition, and also Infamous Second Son. Nice, nice, good picks. I like not this. Bad. This is really cool. It's good, isn't it? I really like it. Uh, I'm going to have a look, right? Last one for me from Cappy, because Cappy Games are pretty cool. Let's see what they recommend. Um, so they made Super Time Force. They recommend Super Time Force. <laughs> Shovel Knight, High Polite Drifter. Uh, see, I, lo- I like that sort of game. And then we've got Mercenary Kings, which I don't know, so I'd, I'd be tempted to have a look at that because of that recommendation. Crypt of the Necrodancer, Bro Force, mm-hmm. Enter the Gungeon, and Towerfall Ascension. Now, I sort of like all of those. And some nice roguelites in there, and so it makes me think, oh, what's the Mercenary Kings then? Yes, yes. And maybe there's a little gem there that I've missed. Hmm? I've just clicked on it. Looks pretty good. It looks a bit like, um, well, it looks a bit like Broforce, to be honest. It looks, looks pretty cool. There you go. So See, the creator's available. list has done its job in you by going, oh, I've played that and that. I like those people. I'm it is, and instead of just being... Joe Public, which it is on Valve, uh, on Steam, sorry, hmm. um, which, which is good. It's good that they give their time up to do it, but I just think it's got the edge. It's a little bit more interesting to have a look at what the people that you admire, um, the game cre- if there's a game creator or if there's a company up there that you really love, yeah. to get the tips from them. I just think, that's a, I just think it's a, a step ahead, isn't it? I just think it's a really nice touch. It's more interesting. It catches my attention certainly more to think, Ah, oh, it's the guy who made Street Fighter. I'd love to see what he thinks. Mm. And then you'll see an array of games. And if the games all match you except one, you're like, well, he loves all these games. I like all these games. Going to have a look at that one. Let's just have a look. So, yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a nice touch from Sony. Hopefully it'll come over to the UK. Um, I've got no information about when it will, but I don't see why it wouldn't. I yes. don't see why it wouldn't. Well, if it doesn't, you can just well, stick a link in the show notes and you can just go over to here and then just have a look at the games yourself and then just and pop, have a butchers, yeah. pop to the PlayStation Store and buy it yourself. Speaking of the PlayStation Store, did you see that um, today, um, as time of recording, they actually put a whole load of merchandise up for UK, Germany and other parts of Europe um, that they've now opened the PlayStation Store like merchandise. So this was, normal, this was just available in the US before where they've got lots of kind of um, freight Framed photos, lots of T-shirts, caps, um, accessories, and and just game game paraphernalia. Um, but it's really cool. I've I've ordered myself a a grey PlayStation T-shirt. It's basically like a kind of a, a really cool charcoal grey T-shirt with a big PlayStation logo on it, and then underneath it, it's got PlayStation in in Japanese. And wow, it looks really cool. You know, I was like, yep, yeah, what <laughs> I was like, done. That's that's my next T-shirt. I just really like it. It's really cool. Wow, no, I didn't know. So you've got mm. live, live surprise from me. Um, it's really cool. Mm. I love it. There's a, there's a good cap here. There's, even, there's a pair of leggings here for the lady gamer in your life. Oh, absolutely. If you want if you want um, gamer leggings, you should go to uh, Insert Coin. They've got really cool Sonic ones um, and Persona ones as well. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. I went to I went to Insert Coin after last <laughs> week. and I mean, you did sort of mention it, but... I was, I was all excited and I got there and it was all Persona 4 and I was just like oh, this means nothing to me <laughs> yeah unless I play it's like yeah, I could make it mean something to me by playing Persona 4 for 200 hours but mm. I just want Persona 5 um, yeah I like this merch I like the, do you remember um, when we went to Eurogamer not last time but the time before mm-hmm. and there was that baseball jacket that was a Playstation one they've got one very similar here right right um, oh they've got a journey picture oh Wow! I should have told you about this later. you be like, <laughs> "Yeah, sorry, man. I'm being distracted now." Claire, it's probably too late, but I like this picture. <laughs> <laughs> this is my birthday. Your birthday is only a couple of days away, isn't it? Um, and a couple of days and change. A couple of days and change. You like that, don't you? It's, I do. Uh, next Tuesday. Oh wow! That's just so cool. That's just so cool. 
or this Tuesday, I suppose, because it's Wednesday. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, that's brilliant. I'm going to have a look at that store. I love yeah. that journey picture. There you go. I'll stick a link in the show notes uh, for anyone who um, uh, wants to have a check out the uh, PlayStation merchandise. Uh, but it's very cool. Do you, have you seen the T-shirt that I've ordered? The the grey one with the big PlayStation logo on it. No, I've just closed the tab. All right, it looks very cool. I'll I'll, I'll send it to you a bit later. So, yeah, uh, so yeah, so that's uh, that's really cool. So the PlayStation Store offerings, the creators' picks, they look really good, really good. Especially if you're like, kind of if you're um, stuck for a game or, or want to try something different. Like I say, it's quite yeah. nice to see those people that you like and trust, and see that they like all the other games that you like, and then maybe there's something new in there for you. Yeah, a bit of a summer drought. Have mm. a little look. Yeah. Wow, one day maybe our picks will be up there, eh, Anthony? There you go, there you go. My, yes, indeed. Guaranteed right. good games. Guaranteed Anthony, good games. Right, the next piece of news is with me, and that was Destiny 2. Um, the Destiny 2, the gameplay um, was revealed last week. So I think just after we podded, um, there was a whole big Destiny 2 event the, the next day. I think it was on the Thursday. Um, a whole big Destiny 2 gameplay reveal. Um, did you see this, Darren? Did you Did you watch it? Did you... I did, I did. I did, it, yeah. I, I did see it. Yeah, I did see it. Yeah, I tuned in. Probably it'd probably been going on for about five minutes, mm-hmm. so, so so pretty much saw all of it. Um, really good presentation. Of, I thought it was really it was cool. An amazing. Pre- I was shocked. It was an hour to reveal a game. I thought this is how trailers should be done. Yeah, should be an hour. Every game that comes out should have an hour presentation. <laughs> yeah, any small little game, indie game or whatever, should yeah, have an hour matter. presentation. But With an uh, audience, yeah, an orchestra. All- whooping and a hollering so they had some big guys from the kind of destiny um some big guys from the destiny crowd you know from the online game as well as people were just invited to that there was media um there was obviously other people from bungie as well but i thought i thought it was really good i thought it opened and i will put a link to the gameplay reveal if you haven't seen it because i think the thing that we need to take away from this is it it looks stunning you know it looks really good it really you could tell the extra level of detail that's kind of in in destiny destiny 2 on the characters and and it was it was really interesting i listened to a podcast um later on where they interviewed um a couple of the guys from bungie about it um and they revealed that they're not they weren't talking too much about the pc version of that reveal just saying that the pc's going to be there it's going to be an un unclocked if that's the right term for pc people an unclocked um frame rate um and then obviously kind of running as much as it is but on playstation 4 pro um on playstation 4 pro it's going to be running and also on xbox one it's going to be running at 30 fps so we're going to have 30 frames um it's going to be running there but on playstation 4 pro it's going to be running at 4k so they they've got they've got 4k so destiny 2 will be 4k on the playstation 4 pro running at 30 frames a second they they were challenged the podcast i was listening to did challenge these guys and said what about scorpio um to which point they just said they're not talking about scorpio like today we're not talking about that but we'll be talking about that at e3 um so you can probably bet you know will it be for 4k 60 frames or um because they basically just said that's that's as much power as they can get from the playstation 4 pro they're the 30 frames they'd rather have it locked at 30 and and at 4k which is you know, you're seeing that in a lot of playstation 4 pro games where you can choose between 30 and 4k or 30 and 1080p you know you have that change but but destiny 2 is going to be 30 fps and then running at 4k um but i thought it just looked i thought it looked absolutely the the level that they gave us the the walkthrough again which i'll I'll stick in the show notes that was basically just kind of halfway through that level so there's some stuff that had happened before the opening that was like the opening level and it was kind of halfway through the opening level and i was just like yeah i can't wait to play this you know i can't so much so that i'm very tempted to kind of pre-order um so i can have a quick go of the beta you know in the summer uh, yeah, well, I mean, you're a big fan of Destiny. I am know? indeed. So I, I wouldn't be surprised. I'll blame you if you did that. I mean, it was a good presentation. Mm. Me, I like Destiny not as much as you, but I enjoyed it. I told many times it was the reason I bought a PS4. Um, that was that was the one that swung me over, um, and I loved it. You know, I really liked it. Um, but I, I gave up when I, I just sort of got tired of it quicker than some people. Um, maybe longer than others. I lasted. But you know, you man, it's perfect for you. You love it. I would argue though. Um, and I would have probably put this to them if I was interviewing them. And I think I just realised why, actually. It's interesting. I was, my gut reaction to the 4K 30 frames per second on PS4 Pro was, why don't you drop the resolution and give us the 60 frames that everybody wants? But the reason they won't do that, I realise, 
is because that would create a deficit, or sorry, um, a difference between the PlayStation 4 and the PS4 Pro players. Yes. And that would be an unfair advantage on the playing field on a game that probably has quite a seamless sort of multiplayer um, mechanic going on, and it just wouldn't be right. Mm. So that's why. So if it wasn't... Yeah, if it was that the, if the PS4 vanilla could hit the 60 frames, it would be fine. But I'm thinking that it probably can't. And bec- and that's the end of it. Because the PlayStation 4 can't reach the 60, it's like, well, what we can't do... It's kind of like, it makes it easy, doesn't it? It's like, well, we can't do that on the PS4 Pro because it would just split the community. And mm. we don't want to do that on one platform. But what we can do with the PS4 Pro is we, if we're sticking at 30, 30 frames per second, we can give them that 4K and hopefully lock that frame rate in as well. And that's pretty awesome. It's a good compromise. It re- it really is. It really is, you know. And it, and you know, I think the what they were saying was that the, the 30 frames, you know, it's going to run incredibly smooth. You know, you're not going to you're not going to notice it. You're not going to th- think oh i'm running at 30 frames and people that were hands-on at that event and the podcast i was i was listening to was the destiny podcast um the ign's destiny podcast and they said they got hands-on and they were really you know they just said it just was running gorgeous you know they said it was really it was working well so it's just so again you know we always try not to get hooked up we kind of talk about frame rates and, and uh, frames per second and we've done that a couple of times but we try not to get hooked up on it but i think yeah absolutely you're right you know that that stops those playstation 4 pro um having the, double the frame rates doesn't it and the precision yeah because it's almost as if they did that that it, the only fair thing would be that only you only get matched with other ps4 players uh, yes. other ps4 pro players they just split the community. It's nonsense. Yes. So I, th- I think they did the right thing, but they've also given you that that 4K bonus if mm. you've got a pro, which some people like you would probably prefer that anyway. Mm. You know, and there's probably many more people that would prefer that. So I think it's good, and it it keeps every- the thing about a game like this, competitive game, potential esport game. You can't you can't be having a difference in frame rate for no, like no. you know a percentage of players. So I, I think it's fine. And um, obviously the PC. Is where you want to go if you want to get that Destiny 2 60 frames per second, 8K, mm. 120 frames per second experience. <laughs> and basically, I suppose, that increment will go as far as you want to get your wallet out and spend your money. Yes, <laughs> you know? yes, yes. If you want to spend £2,000 on just the graphics cards, then you could have 8K um, million frames per second. You know, it's just where does the cash start uh, stop even. But um, yeah, it was a good reveal. It got me. Uh, it got me going. I was oh, watching that's it. Cool. That's cool. I, I, I started watching it and I was like, "Ah, oh, blooming destiny!" Um, but I just, I got. I think they got the message across, certainly to me, that they'd learned a lot of lessons from Destiny. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Destiny was successful anyway. They didn't. They probably didn't have to learn any lessons because it seems like they've got a wild, massive community out there that's passionate about the game, which is fantastic. But even so, they're not complacent. They've t- they've learned lessons, or they said they learned lessons. You know, they're, they're very interested in getting more story in the game for the single player people but they're also very obviously passionate about fixing things or making things better for the community that supported the game for all this time yes. since release um, and the announcements they made you could tell they, they, it was like community feedback and they put it into the game and then the, the audience reciprocated really well with whoops and hollers and mm-hmm. the guy in the big robot outfit was very happy um, throughout the whole thing and I got the impression that they were quite uh quite in touch with their with their community it seemed like they had a good social rapport because the devs would come out um and they'd get a real rousing applause wouldn't they yes you know, it did feel like it was it was kind of a personal thing mm, mm, and, and then they, they started talking about all the good that had happened with the community and the friendships that had mm. been made i found it all cr- pretty touching I, I started to feel i was missing out <laughs> yeah, I really did, you know, so they did it well. <laughs> for giving away your copy, you've missed out on all this. I mean, one of the things, I mean, there's lots of changes. I, w- I will link as well to a really good uh, Eurogamer article that does detail all of the changes for Destiny 2. One of the things I really liked was there are clans, um, I, yeah, the, the clans, but for me, it was there's also guided games. Now, Nicola and I, we put in, you know, over 120, even more hours um, on in, in Destiny 1, but one of the things we never and we played all of the expansions and we played the you know fleshed out story from house of wolves and all of that um, but one thing that we never did was we never did a, a raid so we never did what 
pretty much the kind of what people are calling you know some of the best points of destiny are these raids are the puzzle solving and working through the raids and we never played a raid we tried to do a raid just the two of us um but it just never happened so i had some friends that were playing on xbox one never got um never got to kind of connect with them or or maybe they were in different levels and they didn't really play it that much and and so it just never worked so we tried to do one on our own um but that, that just kind of we realized at one point where you have to stand on four things at once this just wasn't going to happen you know and uh, so we end up just getting frustrated and carry on so we've never done a raid but with with the um the guided games we would be able to go right we want to pair up with you know does anyone want to take a couple of raid newbies with them um along with a game and we would have been able to do that i mean you could do that now on xbox one as well because you could do the lfg you know they're looking for groups looking for clubs so you Mm. could do that anyway but Bungie have recognised that Bungie have recognised that there's people like us where we've played over 120 hours of the game but have never done a single raid and they've now put this um, this, this, this guided games feature into Destiny 2 and all of the new features that they've got, all of the different um, all of these different kind of very base level and that's why I'm happy that it is Destiny 2 and that it's not just another expansion using because before if you remember kind of when they announced um, Destiny way back when um, they did say that this was a 10 year game you know and we were just going to be using that you buy it once and then you just expansion um and back in kind of I think it was like 2014 or something like that and and I'm glad that they've gone to a new engine because they've obviously they can do the the consoles are changing you know we're now we've got PS4 Pro and a and a Scorpio you know the consoles are changing but also that low level um, foundation as well has changed for the game and maybe you know this will be another another platform that will allow them to kind of build and build on it but you know for me I'm 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 day one I can't wait to play it. Yeah, and you know, I think they've evolved it a lot. I think that the first Destiny, uh, I think we were talked about this when it came out. And stuff. Mm. I, don't, I don't think it was quite the game that Bungie wanted it to be. No, um, there was rumours and uh, and some documented evidence that it got changed by Activision, mm. um, sort of out more than they would have liked, let's say. Mm. And so what we got there was there was vast bits of story that were missing that they probably wanted to put in. I mean, we don't know the whole story; it's just conjecture. Um, but I get the impression that because of the success of Destiny in the incarnation that it went out in, they seem to have Activision's backing even more now. Mm. They're sort of like, that formula worked, but the community will be even more you know, up for it if you do all those things now. And it seemed like Bungie, and I mean, obviously it could just... It, it felt to me, when they brought out the Activision CEO... It felt to me like there was a really sort of passionate and strong relationship there. And it was kind of like I just got the I just got this feeling that it was like Activision was saying, you know, we love Bungie. They're now running with this game, and we're happy for them to do that. And Bungie seemed to be saying, they're not in so many words, but it's like we're concentrating on the single player content. We're concentrating on this. We're doing the clans. We're doing the that that, that guided gaming where you can just join in with another clan that's looking for people and stuff like that, or another raid team and all the rest of it. And it just felt like like it often does with a sequel for something that. Near, was nearly there. Mm. It's as if like this this was the full polished thing that we're going to get, you know. And I, I have to admit, you know, it was hard not to get on board with it. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. It just it looks like it could be, you know, as as I think you know, as you were saying, we've we've spoken about this before. But anyone who played vanilla Destiny, you know, I know there was a lot of grinding in it, um, etc. But anyone who played like the vanilla Destiny to the the very last expansion of the House of Wolves and all of those expansions. It, if you'd have just kind of jumped back in with that expansion, and and you know you can say it's not fair that you have to pay for like extra to get there. But if you would have paid for that, you would have noticed a ginormous difference from the game that you played when it first came out to the game that it, that Destiny One ended up being. You know, and I think I think there has been sites that have also readjusted review scores because they came out and they were like, yeah, this is a six point five, but by the end of it, you know, this was a solid eight. You know, and it was a yeah. good game and like a drive club sort of lifetime yeah yeah like, sort of thing because that's started off a bit tarnished and it grew and it got more and more stuff bolted on until it was probably not unrecognizable but a vastly superior game than what got released 
Um, I think as well, there were a lot of people, and I'm probably one of them, to be honest. It was the expectation. It was a bit, you know, it was the it was the expectation that was set at the start, like you say, with this 10-year story. And for me, they sold me on, on a story, really, mm. that I was going to that I was gonna be gripped by sort of from the get-go. And when I got the game, it kind of felt very um, modular. You know, you'd go and do this bit or you'd go and do that bit. And I quite enjoyed the game. I mean, I played it for 40 or 50 hours, and I did enjoy it, but I sort of reached a point before all the expansions that you mentioned that came out, really, and I was kind of like, all right, I've had enough sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And I sort of resented, I did resent the the fact of paying for more and more. Um, But I'm just one gamer, and obviously lots and lots of people, yourself included, and this vast community out there have, (coughs) have really enjoyed it. And enjoyed all the extra content. Um, they probably learned some lessons with the way to market it as well and, and, and how they're going to go forward with it. I think that, I don't know, I can't remember exactly what I think now, what I thought at the time now, but I I think that it was kind of the impression that I got was that, and then you sort of moan about this a lot when with DLC and stuff, but it's one of the times when I felt the most that the game that I'd paid for actually wasn't a full game. Hmm. And I was a bit annoyed about that. Um, and it did feel like you say. Gr- I don't mind a grind, you know. I'll grind and grind. You know, I was there at the loot cave. I was there at the loot cave with the best of them, <laughs> and I loved it, man. And I felt part of something, and it was great. So I could, I could feel that. That I could feel that. And I even started getting better at the crucible and stuff. But yeah, I think I just, I just had my time with it. Mm. But it's been a few years now. I'm not averse to. I'm not averse to trying again in Destiny Two. I might be there at your side, mate. Awesome, excellent. You know that was it. You know, and it was great because when Nicola and I, I mean, like I say, we played hours and hours of, of this game, and there was occasion where we did a strike, and and it would just bring in a rando, um, and it was say because we would go, oh, there's someone there. Okay, there's someone on the strike. Right, put the headphones on, and we put the headphones on, and they would be saying nothing. You know, they would just run off, and it was always like it was always like a little bit jarring where when we'd look on the map and we'd see that we have to do it, it took us into a, a three man strike. It was always like oh. You know, or or you you you're just forever reviving that person because they were just going off and just jumping and trying to take out the boss for themselves, and you end up just kind of reviving them constantly. But oh. you know, and I never never once did we have a, a a strike where someone was on mic and they were they were talking or they you know or they didn't kind of run off or just do a dance at Nicola when they found out that she was a girl. You know, <laughs> it was like. Always, you know, and it was those sort of stuff that we were like, oh, we really wish it wasn't this, but you know, that's just part and parcel of the game. But you know, apart from that, that gripe, you know, I, I absolutely just, I enjoyed every bit about Destiny. You know, they, Nicola and I were like, we were ignoring TV for ages because we were like, what should we do tonight? Let's just play Destiny. You know, we were, and it was just, it was just so much fun. You know, and I really enjoyed it. And like I say, you know, I cannot wait. You know, Nicola's not very interested in, she's not interested in the beta. Um, we did play the beta for Destiny. Um, I wanted to see if she liked it and she was like this is really cool but she's not interested in the beta but she just wants the full game you know we're like we've marked it in our calendar that's how sad we are we've actually marked it in our calendar for like Destiny 2 day <laughs> you know? when, when, when was it again? it's uh, and I'm just looking at my calendar is it November? That, is it November? no it's September isn't it? September bear with me yeah. bum, bum. that's okay little bit of music to keep everyone occupied Um, oh I'm sorry I asked yeah yeah but it's coming out I'm trying to find it where is it no it's It's coming out soon it's coming out soon plant tulips a few few months and change yes indeed (laughs) right we'll leave it at that it's got to be there (laughs) in somewhere though I'm sure it's September I'm trying to look I'm looking at my calendar now so it's just like I think it came Destiny came out in September I think you're right yeah so maybe that's sort of a they wanted to hit the same month. Maybe they're doing the same day. But yeah, absolutely, and it's really interesting. You know, every now and then you just have to remember these are the guys that bought us Halo. You know, it's just like these are the guys that bought us Halo. There you go, September the eighth of September. September yeah. the eighth. I've just found it in my calendar. I'm just wildly clicking all around. There you go. 
just I'll put you on the spot there. I'm sorry. Exactly. It was, it was, it was, it was so funny. They, they don't. Our friend, these friends don't listen to the podcast. So it's fine. Uh, they're not gamers. Um, but it comes out on the eighth of September, and then the 9th of September, we've got to go to Brighton. You know where you live. Uh, we've got to go to uh, Brighton uh, for a, for a weekend. You know, for a weekend. No. Um, a weekend in Brighton. And I was like, oh, can you believe it? So Nicholas, like, right, let's have Friday off. We'll take Friday off. <laughs> you know, oh, a, launch day off. Yeah, take launch day off. We'll pay it, and then we go to Brighton the next day. My sister's coming down as well. Um, so I was just like, right, we'll, we'll do that. We'll, <laughs> we'll take the eighth off, and then and then we're gonna go to Brighton on the on the uh, on the ninth and tenth. Cool. The original Destiny came out on the 9th of September, oh, did which it? will be. Oh, there you yeah. go. There you go. So same day. It'll have been the same day, won't it? But just because it's a year later, it's just that the date slightly changed. Beautiful. Wow. So the next piece of news, sir, is with you. It is, and uh, this is the news of a few sequels. Yes, it's sequel time over <laughs> the Lost Spark sequel corner. <laughs> hey, you can't um, have a switch corner, a sequel corner. I guess you can. You can have a switch corner, a sequel corner, and then you've got a VR corner. You've only got one more corner to fill. I don't know if I could think of, an, of anything for another corner. Persona we'll, corner. <laughs> persona corner. Let's have a persona corner. Come on, Anthony, sit down. <laughs> Minecraft let's... corner, by the sound of it, when you were oh. like waxing lyrical just then. Oh, right. Don't set me off. Right, here we go. So back back on track. Sequel time. Um, what have we got? The news about Red Dead Redemption. Shocker, it's been delayed. Oh, didn't see that coming. No, nobody saw that coming, did they? So, um, <laughs> I think everyone yeah. saw that coming. <laughs> as soon as it came out, it was like, universally, everyone just kind of just waved their arm, dismissed it, and went, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's like, here's three new pictures of of, of something, and, uh, and it's not coming out until next year. So when's the new release date for uh, yeah, Red Dead? Um, Rockstar have given a statement. I'll read you the statement, Anthony, as I'm sure you're keen to hear it straight from the horse's mouth from the wild west horse's <laughs> mouth <laughs> uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 is now set to launch in spring 2018 nice and specific on Playstation 4 and Xbox One this outlaw epic set across the vast and unforgiving American heartland will be the first Rockstar game created from the ground up for the latest generation of console hardware and some extra time is necessary to ensure that we can deliver the best experience possible for our fans we are very sorry for any disappointment this delay causes, but we are firm believers in delivering a game only when it's ready. We are really excited to bring you more details about the game this summer. In the meantime, please enjoy the selection of new screenshots from the world of Red Dead Redemption 2. So, it sounds to me like uh, maybe the maybe the new models, the Scorpio, uh, maybe the Scorpio more so, uh, and maybe the Pro, threw them a little bit of a curveball mm. and they needed to they needed to maybe regroup and optimize and and that's what de- what's delayed it do you think do you think that could be an optimization for because they're saying from the ground up for the latest hardware mm. that's pro that's scorpio isn't it so m- maybe it came out as a you know they they started development who knows when for sort of ps4 and xbox one then they got word of this and they had they thought right we can do more here but it's going to take more time and that th- Maybe that's it. I mean, maybe it isn't. Maybe it's just that they were on track and they knew, and it's just it's just scoped longer than than they thought. But I was thinking that maybe they didn't know, and they found out when whenever was the right time that developers find out about this sort of thing. Mm. But as they've tried to fill those specs, you know, with improvements, it's just proved to take take longer. Um, I don't mind it being delayed because. The, the, I'd, I'd, like we always say, uh, the, the better the game, the better. I'd rather have a better game and wait than a worse game quicker. Hmm. So that's, but, a, yeah. that's a year, isn't it? So spring, we're spring 2017 now, aren't we? We're still, what was it, January, February, March, or winter? So that makes uh, don't remember, April, May, and June is spring. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, but we were probably expecting it at holiday. So hmm. I think it's de- been delayed by a quarter. But we've still got a year to wait. But we still got a year to wait. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But no, we know we all expected yeah. it. What can you do? Absolutely. You know the fact that they've been so quiet, and obviously there are E3 coming, and 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 rocks. 
Dar don't typically kind of show anything at E3 anyway, so he wasn't expecting to see this, but maybe dropping at some point now, and there was just nothing. And yeah, absolutely, you're right. You know, it it makes it makes Game of the Year easier, <laughs> so it makes that <laughs> a lot easier. Maybe not for you actually, um, judging by kind of what you've been talking about this evening, uh, but it makes kind of that easier. And and you're right. There's a lot of games that are coming out already, um, which I guess all of those are breathing huge sigh of reliefs now um, because they're not going to get trapped pulled on by red dead uh um, so so there's there's lots more to kind of play there's we've got stuff throughout the entire year so we could as you as you said you know we can wait a year for a really good game yeah it's going to occupy that slot that mm. horizon zero dawn occupied i think and that zelda occupied this year yes it's probably you know it's probably going to come out around about then and that's fine as long as we don't get another Horizon Zero Dawn and another Zelda and another Persona <laughs> and another Batman or whatever all the other millions of fantastic games that came out all at the same time. I mean, I'm like only just through them. Yeah, I'm, I, you know, I, I, I stopped playing Horizon Zero Dawn and I haven't been back and that was pulling me at the weekend actually. I was like, maybe I should restart it. Maybe I should yeah. jump in because that I love that game. Do you ever think that you'll get a Red Dead Redemption? I laugh as I say it. Do you ever think you'll get a Red Dead Redemption on the Switch? No, <laughs> I, I don't know. It, I think it'd have to be its its own version that wasn't trying to ape the other console versions. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I think they'd have to be its uh, its own thing. So no, I, I don't. I don't think it'll happen. I think you know, if you want to play Red Dead, you're gonna you're gonna play it on on one of the behemoth consoles. Yes. Um, but yeah, just talking about like you know finishing games and you you feeling the pull of Horizon there. Mm. What I felt after Persona. For the first time this year, which isn't bad, as we get to the end of May, we get halfway through the year. It's like I came out of it, and it's like I've got, I'm sort of gasping for breath. I'm sort of like, <sighs> that's it. I've gone through the games. I played all the games one after another that I could. You know, I missed Neo. I think I missed Neo, but I played everything else that I could of the big hitters and, and finished them. I think. Apart and from Zelda, like, you haven't finished apart Zelda. Apart from yet. Zelda, yeah, <laughs> still got Zelda. Yeah, still got Zelda. But I sort of, I, I can't really remember to chart at it through from the start of the year. Mm. But you know, but there was Persona, and before that, there was Horizon, and there, there's been Zelda as well. Um, but I haven't done that yet, obviously. Um, and there was Yakuza Zero and uh, Nier. I can't. Rem- and yeah, near Automata. Hmm. Um, and what was I playing before? I can't, anyway, the, you know, there's no, been you've like done really well. You've done really well this year with some really good games as well. You've I've challenged spoiled. your tastes spoiled and I've loved every minute of it and mm. yeah I have to sort of try to you know go off on a bit of a tangent with what I'd usually play but after Persona and this I couldn't articulate it before but what I felt is it's the first time I felt there's a there's a bit of a slump right and I, I, I was looking today at the release list and I was thinking what's next mm. and I was kind of like well there's, oh, there's Wipeout um, and I was like oh that's 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 brilliant that's, that's really cool and obviously I've got Mario Kart hopefully you know but I'm banned from getting anything to my birthday mm. Um so, I've got, but I thought you know, Mario Kart aside, um, there's like I I couldn't see anything coming of the same caliber of like the the Horizon Zero Dawn, the, the Zelda, um, you know, any massive hitters. Tekken Seven, yeah, that's great. Injustice, bit of a surprise hit. Um, but I was thinking, what's next? And I was like, oh my goodness. And then I was like, that's what E3's for. That's good. But it's like the, we've we've got a bit of breathing space. We're through it, you know. But what a six months it's been! Yeah, it's been amazing. I think because you started your year with you started your year with Last Guardian, didn't you? Yeah, I probably did. And uh, yeah, and and uh, then you cruiser uh, yeah. after that. Yeah, cracky, you know my gaming, <laughs> you know my gaming habits better than me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. Um, wow. It's been it's been amazing. No. I'm just trying to find. I think you've done. I think you've done like really well. You should just look back through the show notes, and then you'll be able to see what you've been playing from about probably. I think 75 was our game of the year. Um, so from then onwards, I think you'll probably find you know the games you've been playing. But I think you're right. I think it's Last Guardian, Yakuza. Wow. Yeah, it's been a it's been a it's been a fine time. And let's just have a, a little think. Yeah, Gravity Rush was that. Yeah, that was this year. Yeah, it started with. Yeah, I think it started with Gravity Rush. Then Yakuza Zero, bit of For Honor, Horizon Zero Dawn, um, Neo, but I couldn't play much of Neo because I wanted Persona. Uh, uh, so Persona, and in between that, Zelda. Wow. Final. When did you play Final Fantasy Fifteen? Flipping it. When was that? That was last was that, year. That was pre- I think yeah, that was last year. Right. And I've just got through today actually. So my new game is going to be Hitman. 
Right, right. Oh, okay. Got, awesome. I said, I said, when I got a gap, I play it. Mm-hmm. I've got a gap, and the other night I was like, "What the heck am I going to get that's out?" And I was tempted to go back to Neo because I quite liked it, but I thought, you know what? I really would like to see Hitman. Never seen it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, it sounds great. James sold it to me, and I thought, I've got that gap. I'm gonna. That's, that's what I'm doing. I've got it. I haven't played it yet. So next week. I'll give you my opinion on Hitman, which uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to playing. So anyway, back what to did the you news. get it on? What did you get it on PlayStation uh, or Xbox? I, I got it on Xbox because I think James said that there was something about that he could set. He set challenges. or Yes, something. yes, he has. He set one for uh, yeah. He set one. Of Manny and I were a uh, friend of the show. Manny, uh, we were we were doing it, and yeah, he set he set a really good one. So yeah. oh, brilliant, <laughs> a really hard one. I suppose that means. So I just obviously I'm gonna <laughs> got to get used to it. Um, so I'm looking forward to. I've got you know I've got the full season thing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get you know I'm gonna get involved. See what it's all about and. I ho- I'm, I'm, I'm expecting to be pretty impressed, so yeah, I can't wait. Excellent. Um, I'm probably going to dive in after the pod. Excellent. Um, so, so that's it for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, back to the uh, the sequels corner. Um, so yeah, talking about Take Two, a rock star part of Take Two. Take Two has also teased a mystery game um, that's going to come out probably um, well before. Before March the thirty first, twenty nineteen. So it's a bit vague. But what they've done, they they've had to sort of come out and admit because of the delay of Red Dead, they've had to sort of come out to their investors and say, I think the quote was, "Our schedule is a bit light this year." Um, they've had to say. So in order to sort of compensate for that, they've made a statement to their investors that said um, that they're expecting good returns or a boost from when Red Dead goes live and gets released. But as well as that, because we know that that's been delayed, but they're also saying that they're going to get money to keep the investors happy with, and this is a quote, a highly anticipated new title from one of 2K's biggest franchises. End of quote. Table Tennis 2. <laughs> yeah, it could be. It could be. Speculation on the internet thinks it might be... Oh, well, I think, I think the speculation on the internet thinks it's going to be Borderlands or Bioshock. Right. But I think there's a, there's a hope on the internet that it could be a new XCOM game. I hope Borderlands three is out before 2019. See, it could be a new. It, I'm, yeah, I'm I think, hoping. You know, so does that mean that Take Two? There's no Borderlands. There's nothing on there. There's nothing on their horizon until Red Dead. I think pretty much. Yeah. Oh my god, that means there's no. Because I was expecting, you know, because like a couple of years ago, Randy Pitchford said we're making Borderlands three. Come and work with us. Um, and I was hoping that they would be like, and here's Borderlands three. And I love yeah. Borderlands so much. Well, the, pres- the their president, uh, Carl, uh, I think it's Slatoff. It could be Slatoff. Carl Slatoff, let's say, um, he's the president of Take Two Interactive. He said that Take Two would not show any brand new games on the show floor at E three. But that doesn't mean so, that we won't get Randy no. Randy coming out again in these very loud shirts saying his but but he normally does uh he's he's friends with Jeff Keeley. He normally does the game awards, doesn't he? Yeah. I mean he's gearbox, isn't he? But still it's, it's still two K, isn't it? Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, that pops so if up. They say, if they say there's not there's not gonna be any brand new games for E three, I think that might include Gearbox. So, you know, your, your choices are of what this, this new mystery game Highly anticipated new sequel um, could be. So we said XCOM, Bioshock, Borderlands. Your other ones, which probably aren't so anticipated, uh, could be Mafia. Uh, could be Civilization. I mean, that's big on PC, isn't it? Mm-hmm. They've just had a new um, one of that, though, haven't they? Yeah, that's true. That's only just recently come out, hasn't it? So yeah, I think you know you can't lose if it's border sh- border shock. <laughs> That's what it is. It's Border Shock. Yes, it's a hybrid of both Bioshock and Borderlands. Now, I think if it's if it's Borderlands or Bioshock, you can't lose. And if it's Border Shock or Biolands, even better. <laughs> uh, I'll chuckle at my own joke, mate. Don't worry. <laughs> you don't have to laugh. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it was rubbish. So yeah, it's probably going to be one of them, isn't it? I can't see it being a new XCOM one because I don't think the sales for XCOM two were that great, even though it's really highly praised as a great game. I've still got XCOM 2 to play. It's on my, it's on my backlog of shame. Right. So there you go. Um, that's the take two bit. But the great news is, of course, we had an announcement from Don't Nod, didn't we? Mm. This week. Oh, God, yes. Yes. 
saying that as their original game hit three million unique copies, um, they've decided the guys that don't nod to let us in on a little secret that they've been working on a sequel to Life is Strange. Not only are we getting a, a sequel to Life is Strange, but they've been working on it for over a year. Yes. Awesome. And there's a really sweet video that the, the guys did where they basically just said, thanks a lot, and, you know, it means a lot to us. They get they get mail every day. They get f- fans writing in, sending cosplay, sending them statues. But the question that they answered, which they say they get asked on a daily basis, <laughs> will there be a sequel? And they've said that they're, they're working on a sequel to Life is Strange. That's all we know. That's set in the Life is Strange universe, isn't it? Did they say that? Mm, was it that? Mm, or they just said they, they're working they, on a sequel to Life is Strange? I can't remember. I think at that point I was whooping and hollering. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was difficult not to make your own stuff up in, in your own head, wasn't yeah. it? Because I found that. So I watched the video again today <laughs> to try and, you know, with an objective eye. <laughs> and they said, the key quote, I think, is, working, we're working on a Life is Strange game with... Uh, hold on a minute. With the same That's team. Gone. With the Life is Strange team. That's it. That was the quote. Work, we, we're working on a Life is Strange game with the Life is Strange team. It's been in development <laughs> for over a year. Now, roving around, I remembered a, a previous interview um, with these guys. This was an interview, and I, I found it. It was from, when was this? I think it was It was from a long time ago anyway. Um, and where is it? I'm just trying to find it now. Don't Don't disappear on me. Here we go. This is from the IB Times... On December the 15th, 2015, okay, and this was an interview with the guys about Life is Strange, um, and it looks like it was around about the season two um, right. sort of era right. uh, of the game. And the key quote is, if I can just get to it, I mean, there's a lot of text here. They asked them, right, this is the key thing that I wanted to just mention. The guys at IB Times asked, would a hypothetical second season work, or is Life is Strange best left as a one-off? All right, and this is what the guys over at Don't Nod said to that, admittedly, two years ago. They said, A second season would work, but the story of Max and Chloe is told. Their character arcs are closed. Mm. Whichever choice the player made, Max reached the end of her coming-of-age story. Now she has grown up. She made her pivotal decision, and the player helped to create her character, her feelings, her relationships. We... Th- like to think that we did our job as storytellers and game designers. We helped the players to meet their own personal version of Max and Chloe. That was what they had to say. Yes. So I think I I, I don't you know that I don't think they could maybe they could carry it on. And I think if they did a sort of um, Star Trek esque sort of um, parallel universe thing. You know, like, uh, is it is it J.J. Abrams did for Star Trek? Mm. They could m- maybe, if, I don't know, they could maybe do it so that you could have Max and Chloe again. Um, Can you hear me shaking my head at you right now? <laughs> well, I'm just saying, I'm saying it's not beyond the realms of possibility that no, they could no, do it. Absolutely, but, you know, they, they're such but good they're storytellers. Going. They made such a good world. I, I totally agree. Let's, let's park those. Let's leave that there. Let's create another couple of characters. Let's get that team. The fact that that team is working on another story, that's all, that's all we should need. Because... If the the final at the final of that game there was a decision, and I took one way, you and James went another way, so we were going to annoy both of you, or annoy we're going to alienate you guys, or alienate me, no matter what you take. So if you just went, oh, and here's season two with Chloe, you know, even if it wasn't that parallel, it's going to annoy. And and that game was so powerful, and had all three of us at some point just staring at our. TVs, not knowing what to choose, and and the and the the story just hit us in the feels so much that I don't want to see those characters. I can't even go back to that game and and pick up the achievements because I just I'm I'm just done. You know, I was just like yeah. in rapture at the end of that, and I loved it, and it was a fantastic experience and a fantastic game, and I just went. I'm done. I can't. I can't go near that game again. You know because you know where I have with the um, with the uh, Telltale games. I've played Walking Dead again, and I've played um, um, Wolf Among Us again. But I just couldn't play. I couldn't play Life is Strange again because it's what I had was so 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 perfect. 
Yeah, I quite agree. You know, the way that they did it, and you said it, you said it just there, and they said it themselves. The story arc was so beautifully done that it became personal for every player, mm. and to change it would completely belittle the point of the game, yes. which was to was just to sort of foster that emotional connection with a game that I don't think that I've ever had before with a game. You know, I love that game so much, mm. and it would belittle it. Mm. Um, but say you know they could do it, but they would be selling themselves short, and I think they 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 understand that, don't they? Yeah. I think they're probably very passionate about what they did there, mm. and they because that's the key to their success. If they did that, you know, if they did some like tangent, like you know, sort of midway through the last story or whatever, they'd pull the rug from out of their own feet. Mm. Because there'd be a backlash, like you ex- you summed it up exactly. Mm. It'd be like, well, what, what did it matter? You know, what yeah. you just made the last game redundant. Yeah. So I, I I'd don't like a nod that. to it. Um, no pun intended. I was going to say, it was I, nice I, I, I like a nod to the original game. You know, like if um, yeah, you know, like a when, picture on a wall or something. Exactly. Or when you watch the brand new Planet of the Apes movies, which I I'm a big Planet of the Apes fan. Not the Tim Burton one. We don't recognise that. But you know, the original and the new ones. I love them. And if you watch the very first of these remakes, these reimagining of Planet of the Apes, you actually see on. A TV screen or in James Franco's house, you see Charlton Heston taking off in a spaceship. You know that's on the news. You know, and I loved that. You know, that was to me that was that was like, oh my god. You know, that's like that's like the little Luke Skywalker's training ball in in Force Awakens. You know, so having having something like that maybe go to one of the one of the places in that you went to in your story, something like that. I would just I would go, oh yeah. my god, I can't believe they've done that. You know, and that's just that. Yeah, so, just see in, in the new game, see some kind of manifestation mm. of the aftermath that would be the same. Yes. No matter what the choice was made. Absolutely, and that would just blow me away because the two things I love is one, whenever I'm watching a Marvel TV show or anything where they mention the Hulk or the incident or, or, or you know, or they mention I get, uh, for some reason, I absolutely love it. You know, and there was a game recently that mentioned, that did a kind of, they, they did a crossover with another game and I'm not going to mention either one of those and that blew my mind when I was playing that. You know, so much so that that's, that could be a, my game of the year list and and i just absolutely loved it you know there's just things like that so if they did if don't nod did something very similar to this game to game x there's that you know then they could learn from that and they could you could get a really good um you could get a really good kind of uh, moment where people who are fans of life is strange could really just go yeah that's so good you know just have a little moment and i just i just love the thought of that as well yeah yeah that sounds that sounds just wonderful really um don't not have gone on to say um that they won't be at e3 the new game won't be at e3 in june well they might be at e3 but the new game won't be at e3 in june um which is unfortunate but there's still a bit of hope because apparently and i've forgotten about this but the original life is strange wasn't revealed at e3 it was revealed at gamescom oh right after e3 right now they've gone on record saying not at e3 that's it they just left it there We've been in development for over a year. I'm, I'm crossing my fingers that they're going to follow suit and do a reveal at Gamescom. Mm-hmm. So that's something to look forward to. Um, and that's it. That's that's my sequel corner. Sequel <laughs> corner. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It even has a jingle. Excellent yeah. stuff. Next piece of news with me trucking along is that the games with gold for Xbox have been announced. So they were announced, um, I think, yesterday or today. Um, they were been announced for the for June. Um, so quick rundown of those. We're starting off with Speedrunners. Um, so Speedrunners is going to be on Xbox One and will be available from the 1st of june to the 30th of june and speedrunners is a bit of a i think it's been on pc and steam and stuff and it's a side scrolling racing game um looks very interesting um so again i'll stick a link to these in the, in the show notes but that's speedrunners um is coming from the first to the 30th of june um also on xbox one we've got Watch Dogs. the original Watch Dogs is coming from june 16th to july the 15th um so that's the kind of two xbox one games that we've got this month and then over on xbox 360 but obviously playable on xbox one with backwards compatibility um we've got assassin's creed 3 
So and that's the that's the American civil that's the American Civil War one, isn't it? Assassin's Creed Three. Yeah. See, I, yeah, I enjoyed that one. I've never played that, but that's the one that interests me the most because I like American history, and I just like I might I might play this. You know, I might I might slum it in the backwards compatibility world and, <laughs> and, and play Assassin's Creed Three because this, this but at least kind of fire it up and, and check it out. Just check the achievements out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're normally quite hard in, in Assassin's Creed games. And then the last one, um, rounding this up, is a Dragon Age Origins. So Dragon Age Origins is going to be available from June 16th to June 30th, um, or the 360 version um, of playable on Xbox One. And then the last thing that we're going to have is a bit of DLC for um, the free-to-play game that I've just clicked away from, which is Phantom Dust. So there's a bit of uh, DLC that's going to be available for Phantom Dust. So this it's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad, is it? You know, there's like Watch Dogs was so-so. It wasn't very well-received, was it, the original Watch Dogs? Uh, Watch Dogs. No. But they're all good games, aren't they? You know, yep. they're all sort of they're all big titles. They were all big titles of their time, weren't they? Yeah, definitely. You know, it's uh... apart from speedrunners, obviously. But apart from that, yeah, the rest were all all, all very kind of big uh, hitters. But the news from the um, games with gold, uh, which, uh, as Darren said, you know, good good selection, but got a little bit superseded today because Microsoft announced that um, Xbox Games Pass is um, will be available to play from the 1st of June for anyone who's not a Gold member, and also anyone who is a Gold member can sign up right now um, to Xbox Gold Pass, and you get a free 14-day trial, so if you activate it now, around 7th of June, you will be charged, um, I think it's $9.99 US dollars and $7.99 UK pounds um, per month for this subscription. Um, so June the 1st, this goes live for non-Gold members, anyone who is an Xbox Gold member will be able to start um, their early access right now. Um, Daz, have you had a look at any of the games that are available with the Xbox Games Pass? Yeah, I had a little look through. I think it's, uh, I think like we said before when, when they announced it, I think that this is a great add-on, a great solution for those that don't want sort of the latest and the greatest games. Because mm. um, there are gamers like that and they're just happy to sort of play the older games. You know, they've made a decision that they want, they're, they're, they're their sort of model is that they wait for the the latest games to come down in price a little bit. Why not just do this? You know, for those kind of people, it just gives them not infinite, but as, as near as as near as you can be to infinite games. You know, you've got a hundred games with some games going out and some games coming back in and get and, it, and it's cycling along. The only thing that I would worry about is I felt a bit like that when I first got Sky. You know, like Sky movies. Mm. Back in the day, and I, I mean, I had Sky for years, so it might be completely different now, but what I felt was I got Sky and I sort of like just hoovered up all the films, like within the first month or so, and after that, it was kind of all the same. Do you know what I mean? Yes, um, yes. So that's the only fear for this, but I think games are a different medium, really, you know. There's, there's some really good value here. Yeah. You know? I mean, for me, I, I activated my 14-day trial um, before before I had dinner this evening. And um, and I've downloaded Blood Bowl, or Blood Bowl, um, yeah. which is the kind of like, it almost looks like Warhammer cross uh, American football. Um, I always like the look of that one. I've been very tempted to buy that. Um, and the other ones that I downloaded, I mean, some of the highlights in there, you've got Gears of War Ultimate Edition is in there for Xbox One. They also have the other Gears of War for backwards compatibility. Halo 5 and Halo Spartan Assault um, are both in there as well. Um, and then the other one that I downloaded, which was a game that I've heard a lot of good stuff around, but I never got around to playing it, was Mad Max. Um, oh, so, yeah. so I've downloaded Lumo um, is another one that's on there, um, and you've got Oli Oli, which we were talking about just now in the creators list. Um, Resident Evil Zero, you know, I'm picking out all of the Xbox One titles, um, but there's also a whole load of uh, Xbox 360, such as Soul Calibur and Soul Calibur Two um, mm-hmm. HD, and you know, Spelunky as well. <laughs> um, oh man! <laughs> so, <laughs> I was going to say, I'm looking at the start of this just at the top with the, all of the games, the 360 games. It looks like my um, ready to install list on my <laughs> Xbox One 
<laughs> so you've got Sunset Overdrive, you know, by Insomniac, um, which was a fantastic game. Um, it had tricky controls, but if you kind of kept with it, you know, you ended up kind of just uh, having a bit of a blast on that. Um, you know, they've even got Virtual Fighter Five Showdown. So, so I'll stick the link to it. Obviously, you know, the most important games that are on the list right at the bottom there: Viva Pinata, <laughs> Viva Pinata, Trouble in Paradise. Um, I have to mention those because uh, <laughs> they're there uh, on the Xbox 360. Um, but but yeah, they they've got some. There's some good games. There's some good games in there. You there's know, some good games. You know, if you've never played Gears of War, you know, you for, yeah. for your nine quid or your seven pound a month, you could play Gears. You could play Gears One, Gears Two, Gears Three, Gears Judgment. You know, and then you could like, then you could appreciate Gears of War Ultimate Edition. All the you know, all one after another. Mm. You can shoot, binge it the whole lot. Yeah. Uh, Halo Five, obviously, great value. Farming you know, Simulator that, that, Fifteen. If it's got a following. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I tell you, the other one that that was it. The other one that I downloaded was DMC Devil May Cry Definitive Edition. Ah, you see, that's a game. Yeah, like me, that I, I would never really buy, but I wouldn't mind mm. seeing if it's for me. Yeah. Ollie Ollie's a classic game as well. Such a good Twitch reaction game, building up combos. You know, it's that's that's a really nice little game. Mm. Um, I'm just looking through here. You know, there's some of the old Sega classics that I've already got. But if if you didn't have them, mm. you know, Golden Axe Wonder, but the Wonder Boy collection is awesome. Um, Soul Calibur, you mentioned that already. Spelunky, it's worth it on its own. <laughs> yes, yes. That's it. Strider, you know, I never looked at the new version of Strider, but I loved the old one, and I'd, I'd be very intrigued to have a look at this. Tekken, you know, it's a, it's a good selection. Hmm. It's a good. If if you just bought an Xbox, if you went out and bought an Xbox, I think this would probably be preferable than, like I say, if you weren't after the, if you weren't buying it for the latest and greatest game, if you just wanted it for something to do occasionally, you're not that much. Bang into it, being at the cutting edge. This is more value for money, isn't it? You know, for the price of one game, you could have four months or maybe more, maybe five months of this, and just see how it goes. Yeah. And you, you know, you'd have to have some serious time on your hands to get through them all. And it's not like it's a load of old dross. It's there's some really good ones, and yeah, some of them are on 360. But there's some fantastic games on 360, isn't there? Mm. It's a good mix. Yeah, they've got Toy Soldiers. They've got both of Toy Soldiers. Um, Toy Soldiers and Toy Soldiers Cold War as well, um, which are absolutely, they're, they're great games. They're great fun. Um, Super yeah, Time Force. Yeah. You know, there's there's a real, we'll put a link to the, the games that are in here. But I've, I've like I say, I've activated it. I'll have a quick play of a few of those games. Um, I've put a little bit of a, I've put a, uh, a an item in my diary just to remind me to maybe kind of have a think about it uh, on the 5th of June because mine's, I actually, Activated mine today, so on the seventh of June, they will then Microsoft will then charge me seven ninety nine. Um, so mm. if I'm, you know, if I'm playing Mad Max, you know, but for me, if I'm playing Mad Max, then I'd be better off doing my boom, getting it from Boomerang rather than. So I think, you know, if I was going to go with this, I'd probably cancel my Boomerang. But by doing that, that means I'm not going to get all the brand new games, doesn't it? Yeah, you'd just be going through sort of a hall of fame mm. of the older games. It's if I'm honest, I like this idea, but it's not something that tempts me because, like you say, you know, if I've got a choice of how to get consumable games or games as a service, if you like, mm. um, I'd rather I, I want sort of want to be able to get the latest. I just can't help it. Yes, um, and it's just not enough to tip me over the edge to get it as well. Yes, I think I think it was. A, they probably wouldn't do it, but it'd have to be a bit cheaper for me. Mm. Or, or if they did, if they did sort of a gold membership that was an extra, mm, I don't know, thirty quid. See, obviously, I'm not willing to pay much. Mm. But if they did, you know, say an eighty pounds gold membership, or I don't know what, it, they could tempt me if they lumped it in with your with your twelve months mm. membership and added this in. I'd probably be more inclined to consider it, but. Because people like me and you, we've played most of them, haven't we? If it's a good yeah. game, we played it in, back in the day. But if you get a nostalgic feeling for a game, it's a good way to go and re- re-experience it uh, if you don't own it anymore. Absolutely. I mean, for me, the kind of two questions is because, I mean, like I say, Mad Max wasn't a game I played, but you know, seven ninety nine over twelve months, you know, that's almost a hundred pounds, isn't it? It's like ninety five, ninety six pounds. Um, yeah. So, so. Is it worth, like I say, is it worth it for games? I mean, for like, if you're a brand new player or if you don't have, if you don't play all those brand new games, then maybe this is worth it. That's seven ninety nine. Um, but for me, the questions, the two questions I have is, how, how is this going to affect games of gold? Um, and how is this going to affect games of gold? And, and what's what's Sony going to do? What's you know what what your move, Sony? You know what what are you going yeah. to do now? With their ridiculous price, I mean, what is it twelve ninety nine a month? 
what for playing for a load of old for, yeah. for a load of old for a load of old stuff that you have to stream um, and you don't get you have 1080p to stream. and yes absolutely yeah. and yeah. you know it comes with all the all the problems which they make, the Xbox make a big deal about mentioning <laughs> um yeah it's sort of Sony's move as for the games with gold this feels like a bit of a if you haven't if you if you're new to the party and you missed out on all those games with gold you you subscribe to this and you kind of get them all because there's loads on here. Mm. It's as if I think anything that comes out on Games with Gold is going to go in here. Yes, and and I was just about to say a lot of them. When you're looking at World of Keflings, Idar, Borderlands, you know, a lot of these, the, um, you know, a lot of these have Defense Grid too. You know, a lot of these have already been Games of Gold, haven't they? They certainly have. Yeah, Brothers is a Games with Gold. Yeah, um, D4 was Games with Gold. Mm-hmm. Um, like loads, like you said, you said Defense Grid, didn't you? Yeah, um, massive challenge through. That was one. Uh, Max, the yeah. Curse of the Brotherhood. That was another so, one. Games with Gold, Hall of Fame. Yes. Yeah, Night Squad. That was Games with Gold. Um, they're all <laughs> they've all been Games with Gold. Max and <laughs> Max Curse of the Brotherhood. I think that was Games with Gold too. So I think this is sort of they're going to lump all them in, mm. and I think every month. They're going to say in and out, but I think maybe there'll be a core of all the games with gold. But hopefully, well, we'll have to keep an eye on it. Mm. They'll announce it. Well, if a good one goes in, they're going to announce it. Yes, um, and you're going to have it for like 15 days anyway. But yeah, it would take more than more than what's there to, to tempt me in. Either it, I'd need higher quality in the in the collection or a cheaper price. But for other people, it'll probably suit them down to the ground. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's it's good to have options, isn't it? Really and like is. you said, you you were working it out there, and you're like, well, it's seven nine out. It works out about this a year, about hundred quid, and it's like, well, I could do this, but I could go to Boomerang. There's another place uh, mm. that, that that does it as well. It's like, hmm, mm. uh, what 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 I'm gonna? It's nice to have options, but yeah, when you're talking about a hundred quid a year, that's that's really the about. You're probably paying an extra twenty quid for Boomerang for a whole year, and if you subscribe to Boomerang for a whole year, I think you'd probably get it a bit cheaper. So you'd be better off doing that. Plus, but you get bonus gains with Boomerang as well. So Boomerang yeah, works out about one hundred and thirty a year, yeah. um, and plus you'll get a couple of bonus games chucked in there but as well. But you can only have one at a time, can't you? But this one, you can have them all at the same time yes. if you want. Yes. But that I find that just fragments my brain. Yes. <laughs> you know, I'm a one. I'm a one at a time game. Kind of, <laughs> well, you know, one or two, one or two. But yeah, you know, it's not. You couldn't really sell it on the fact you could play twenty games at once. It's kind of like, well, easy. I'm, I'm happy with one or two, um, so it can't compete really there, can it? So you know, people just make their own choices. I think giving a trial, jump in, see what you think. Yeah, I think I think you're spot on with your first summation, which was if you're brand new to Xbox, if you've just bought an Xbox One, um, then this is great because you get Halo, you get Mad Max, you get Gears um, uh, Ultimate Edition, which is Gears One but high res. Great set of games. Those those three alone, Viva Binyata, Trouble in Paradise. Those four alone are worth the entry price, you know, on their own. Yeah, and yeah. just get it's those. definitely like an in- an introduction to what all the fuss is about. Yes, it's like what's all this game? What's mm. all this newfangled gaming? I've never been a gamer. What's everyone talking about? Mm. Have a sample of some of the finest games that the Xbox has had, and that's an idea. And then you can decide whether whether to carry on with this. Do what you want. Find out if you like games for just a cheap price. I presume there's no contract on it. No, you can just finish it at any time. You go into your memberships settings, and then you can just say no. no opt out. <coughs> it just uh, excuse me, I'm joking. <coughs> That'll teach me to try and drink my drink quick. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> my goodness me. Yeah, it just starts. To, I was trying to say it just starts to add up, doesn't it? If you as these memberships. Mount up mm. because on, on Xbox you could have your EA Access one on top. Yes, with your games with gold and with your um, what's the name of this one? Um, games Pass. Games Game Pass. Uh, games Pass. Games Pass. Game Pass. And then you've got your Sony one if you're a two console kind of person. Maybe Nintendo. Like, maybe Nintendo. Maybe Nintendo. Well, definitely. Yeah, if you're going to pay for that, and it's kind of like crikey, my my monthly outgoing for just gaming is, is actually starting to be, it used to be just a few quid for, you know, 80 quid a year for both, roughly you know, you know, you can get it cheap and stuff but all of a sudden it could, it could get to quite significant money, it could start to be like a gym membership or something <laughs> like that if it carries on but if, if you choose to subscribe. Yeah, if you think about it, you know, um, my, well, I had this conversation at work the other day with a, with a, with a friend at work, you know, I, I've got my Apple Music um, Amazon Netflix Xbox Live, PlayStation Plus, EA Access, you know, 
that all just Sky, you know, Sky aside, but just all those other subscription services, that really adds up. It does. You don't notice it, do you? No, <laughs> and that's it, it, isn't fun it? Stuff it's just as like well, little things. All of a sudden, yeah, and all of a sudden it's like my entertainment outgoings a sort of like a small mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, actually, while we're talking about Amazon, Amazon have just launched um, Prime Reading. Um, Prime Reading, which is pr- it's basically you know, another service in that Amazon Prime umbrella that give you free books. So on, they, there's a bit like um, Amazon Movie, though you get a Prime, you can get a book. But you can also get magazines on your iPad app or your Android app. You can download magazines. And one of those magazines is um, Official PlayStation Magazine. And it's this month's Official PlayStation magazine as well oh wow that's cool that's really good so like another little kind of offering from from amazon yeah another another subscription you could make to prime yeah absolutely oh i could never <laughs> i could never give up prime i could i could that that's one of the things i could just never give up you know, because it's just it's awesome right the last piece of news sir is with you it is actually just before i go on to it no that's the last I'm, piece I'm, of news I'm, i just said it <laughs> go on, go on. i see oh, no 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 you missed it i thought did you mention it to me that Amazon have gone to 4K now with their... Yes, Amazon on Xbox One S, the Amazon Prime app is now 4K HDR on uh, Xbox One S. Yeah, I think you t- I think you must have told me that. Yeah, so that, that's that's pretty cool. I have to check it out. I haven't checked it out yet. Hmm. And I'm not gonna- yeah, anyway. Um, the last piece of news is with me, and this... <laughs> Eurogamer report, that game have launched a loyalty card scheme. That you have to pay for. Um, so this, you know, you, you can get a game card. And you get you get points when you when you buy yeah. and stuff. You know that. I know you answer me. I know you're a big fan. <laughs> um, well, they've launched a sort of higher tiered um, card, like a platinum card. They're calling it the Elite Loyalty Card. Um, and I'll break it down for you, yeah. as Eurogamer have broken it down for me. Um, it's thirty six pounds a year. What? So it's another cost. Yes. There you go. Uh, and what you will get for your £36 a year of dedication to game... You know, you're saying, I love you, game, if you're given £36 for a piece of plastic. What are they going to give you back? They're going to give you 10% back on all physical games, merchandise, and accessories. Mm-hmm. Uh, they'll give you 4% on consoles, uh, and PC, VR, phones, and tablets. So a little, so less for the big, for the big money stuff. Um, 2% points back on trading and digital. Um... And that's about it. Oh, and you also get a birthday gift. You also get a birthday gift. So this sort of works out. Your gamer did some rough calculations, uh, and they they worked they worked out that basically, if a full price game was forty pounds, you'd have to buy ten in twelve months to get a free game to break, which yeah, cost yeah. which would cost you about as much as buying the membership. But the thing is, full price games at game aren't forty pounds. They're usually forty four ninety nine or more. Yeah, they're normally like as close to the RRP as they can get. Yeah, they'll yeah, exactly. So there would be more than ten games. It'd probably be more like eleven f- games to sort of get a free game to break even. But you wouldn't really be breaking even. It just doesn't seem to work for me. Um yeah, and the, the games say if you have been a member for twelve months and received less points back from your purchases than the fee you have paid for your membership for those twelve months, they'll give you the difference in points back. But I don't want the difference in points. I'd rather just keep my money. It doesn't. Seem, it doesn't sound like a tempting deal to me. No, no, it doesn't seem like you're going. You're getting. If you were getting something else, you know, like uh, you, you got early access to games, or there you know, was extra stuff that they were giving you, giving you apart from obviously a birthday present. You know that. Then it might be tempting, but this doesn't really kind of tempt you, is it? It's like you give us some money up front, we give you a little bit of money back every time you buy a game with us. It, yeah, but yeah, but it's not real. It's not money. It's in their points anyway. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, you know. So it's even worse than money because you're beholden to spending that only with them, which you know any loyalty card would be like. But the thing, the the thing about that is because you're stuck with them because they charge usually five or ten pounds more than you could get it online. Every purchase you're making is kind of you're just kind of making a being beholden to them is making a rod for your own back isn't it because mm. it's like oh a new game comes out and you're like oh I could get this on Amazon for, for, for say I don't know 37 99 and you're like yeah but I'm going to have to get it from game because like I've got my points on my card that I've made but it's 44 99 from game mm. 
I just don't. It's just. I think it's a trap. For, <laughs> it's a trap. It's a, it's a trap for parents and grandparents and people. You know that go in and buy a game for little Johnny. Yeah. Like they sell that um, game insurance, disc insurance, don't they? Yes. And you know they're going to get the, the nice lady and whatever, and she's like, "Oh yes, I'd I just like to buy Grand Theft Auto Five for my six year old." And they go, "Oh sure, here we go. First of all, you need you should. Do you want this insurance for the disc?" And she's like, "Well, do I need it?" And like, "Yeah, well, if it gets scratches, we'll we'll replace it straight away if it doesn't work." And she's, "Oh, that, is that something I should do?" The guy goes, "Yeah, you should." Okay, okay. While you're at it, did you know we did this scheme? While you're at it, do you want the season pass? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> yeah, that's the, the other one they pass, try to yeah. tell you. Do they? Oh, I've never had them do that on me. Oh, God, yeah. But they do the disc thing, and then she so she's buy, buying the season pass as well. So she's going through her money in her purse, <laughs> and they're like, they just say, "Can we? If you want to save even more money, I mean, she's spending loads, but if you want to save even more money, why don't you become a, a game elite member? If you keep, if you're going to buy more games for little Johnny, you'll save money because we'll give you ten percent back every time." Oh, that sounds brilliant. Okay, well, that's £36. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I tell a lie, because if you're interested, um, up until the end of June, you can get you can join this scheme for £33 as an introductory offer. So there you go, Anthony. So that I poor think... woman went in for like a £45 game. She bought the season pass, <laughs> the elite card, ended up spending £100. <laughs> yeah, but she'll get it all back. She'll get it all yes. back in points yes. that she can only spend on overpriced games in the future. Has that convinced you to return your patronage? <laughs> Absolutely not. Are you not going to go down tomorrow? Purchase, say, you know something, I, I decided that maybe I should avoid your shop because of a bad customer experience, but because of the announcement about the Elite Loyalty card, you got me, I'm back. Those, you know, is that not going to happen? Those exclusive, those exclusive, um, those exclusive offers that you're offering me, exclusive deals and offers, they've just got me in that £5 you're going to give me every every 12th of February. You know, please, welcome me back. No, I'm not. No. <laughs> uh, a little bit of insult to injury, there was an update on Eurogamer, um, because they sort of made a statement that you get 2% back anyway, you know, when you're normal, mm. standard game membership. So they went to Game and asked you if the 10% was on top of the 2%. And Game clarified that it wasn't wow. actually on top of the 2%. It includes the 2% that you get as a normal member. Mm. So it's actually 8%. Wow. If I'm working that out correctly, which I think I am. Wow, that's just really interesting. So yeah, get, there you go, it's the, the deal that doesn't stop taking. I don't know. Um, the birthday gift they found out at Eurogamer as well is 2,000 points. Yeah, so which is £5. Yeah. Which is the deficit that you'd pay? That's the extra that you'd pay <laughs> for a usual full price game compared to ordering it from Amazon. Wow. Oh, anyway, hooray for game. Um, and that's it. That's it. So there you go, Anthony and listeners. You are armed with the knowledge now. For 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 many things, you could part with your money for. You could. I think I'd go for Games Pass. But if you're tempted, you can go and join join Game and be an elite member. Maybe you get a badge or a pin or something. Maybe you get more respect when you walk in. Yeah. Ah, Mr. Whittam, sir. Ah, an elite member, are you? Oh, come this way. Come into the back. They've got a roped-off area, and you go in there and browse in peace. Yes. That'd be so Priority cool. queuing at the till. <laughs> you go through a black door, and you go it. into the back, where all the, the uh, where they do have copies of Zelda Breath of the Wild. <laughs> They've got the mountain of them. And yeah, and there's... That, that would actually... And you I don't have to it. play for your VR demo. <laughs> Yeah, and the, you look outside the window. There's like there's like mirrored glass, one way glass, and you look outside. And you can see that snake of a queue trailing out of the shop, but you've got your elite queue at the other side through the door, and it's always empty. And you just go and pay straight away, no questions asked. Oh wow, I'd almost be worth the membership to not have to queue. I don't like queuing. Wow. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So that on that elite note, um, it, that's it for all of our regular news. It's time to head over to VR News Desk for all the latest in VR. VR Desk. Yes, here we are once again at the VR Desk for all the latest news in VR. Um, got a few stories for you today, so let's get on with it as it's really hot. <laughs> oh, my really ears hot are my just room. burning right now. <laughs> He is a burning. I haven't got a fan like you. Oh, oh man, it's roasting in here. Um, My Dyson so the air first... call is working wonders. Hope you can't hear it at, uh, in your headphones. <laughs> I can't hear it at all. So it's it's a beautiful thing having a, having a quiet fan like that. Yeah, I'm it's one of those envious. bladeless ones. You know the big kind of round ones. So it doesn't. There's nothing to oh. rattle around. I thought they were quite loud though. No, no, they're really quiet. 
Well, evidently. Yeah, I've got it on <laughs> four, and it's, it. it's good. It's getting good. It's getting good. We'll send this podcast to Dyson as proof of concept. <laughs> yes, look how quiet it is. Um, yeah, so the first thing we've got is good news for PSVR owners. Yourself? Yay. Wow. And this is what, why, why you, I hear you cry. Why, why is, there good news why is it good news? Why am I going to get it out of the cupboard? It's because, <laughs> it's because Sony Santa Monica, um, a source who wants to remain anonymous, has told VR Focus that there's been a number of projects brought to Sony Santa Monica. Uh, many of them have just been prototypes mm. and game jams. But Santa Monica are working on something big. It's a full-blown second-wave title for PlayStation Ooh, VR. I like that. I like that. Second wave. Second wave. This is a, a new phrase. Um, it'll be revealed soon. I wonder when that might be. And I know it'll go well with the core PlayStation audience, but I can't say any more than that. Wow. So, you know, you've been hoping for some VR stuff at E3. This is the first first significant thing I've heard about that. You know, let's hope that it is E3, but it's only Santa Monica, man. That's That's a... That's a quality pedigree developer mm. making something for you there. Absolutely. Please don't be a letdown. Yeah, yeah. Please, don't, yeah. please don't be an experience. But isn't this what I was saying a couple of weeks ago where I was saying that because the PlayStation uh, PSVR and VR is new, um, it's all of those those developers, they've taken time to get there. You know, they've taken time to, to actually kind of... Since the announcement, they've got the dev kits. They're working on it. So now, you know, the hopeful, the optimistic person in me now wants that. And then when I see those words "second wave," that kind of fills me with excitement. I'm going to go and dust off the PlayStation VR now. Yeah, and there was an item last week, I think, um, where we were we got the news that some guy at Sony, I forgot who it was now. They were saying they were sort of having to fight off developers, you know, turn developers yes. down. That there was no shortage. You remember us talking about that? I there was do. no shortage of people wanting to develop. And I think you like hit the nail on the head there. That they these they're recruiting all these for the second wave, and it's just a little bit quiet, ready to open the gates at E3. That's the hope, isn't it? That's the obvious hope. I still haven't heard any rumblings of a VR. E3 presentation. Now, Sony have said that they're doing lots of mini presentations um, online throughout E3, and we'll have more about those when we get closer um, to E3. But I haven't heard of anything with like a goggles on version um, of, of, of any keynotes. Yeah, and I think they're missing a trick. Oh, it's a real shame. Really do. Maybe it's next year if they pursue it. <laughs> if it doesn't become a Vita, maybe next year we'll. We'll see. It's a shame, though. It's a real shame, you know. It, 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 re- all, all news points that it's been a success, you know, um, or certainly not a failure. Mm. It's sold. A, it's sold a good amount, and you, you can't get them. You know, they they they, they come and they, they seem to be selling steadily. So there, there's a good inst- a good old install base, and like you saying there, you know, they could just do one little thing, couldn't they? A five minute thing, just for just for those people. No, it's, you know, maybe it's too much to ask for them to do the whole thing, if depending on the percentage of people that they, they, they know that have got them. But they could do a quick 10-minute thing. They could say, just for you, via PSVR Faithful, after the show, we'll be doing a special VR presentation that you'll be able to enjoy and see in 360. Watch this. And you never, you never know. They might... Ah, why am I saying that? We would have heard. They'd announce it, wouldn't they? But it doesn't even need to be live. You know, if they said, right, you know, do you watch it live at 3 a.m. in the morning, which I'm going to watch UK time, I'm going to be sitting there watching it. It's probably not a good time for me to put my HMD on anyway. But if they're like, if you go on to the PlayStation, um, the, go on to your PS4, you'll be able to view a 360 version of this later on today to, to kind of experience some of those games. If they did something like that, I would mm. that just... just They've got to mention it because you know we had time. We have we had keynotes where they didn't even talk about the Vita. You know they have to talk about it. They have to talk about the PlayStation VR. You know I the 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 utmost would be that VR keynote live 360. I'm sitting in the audience. I can look around and see people. I would absolutely love that. Um, But if that doesn't happen, then like you say, there's got to be something. If it's a, a VR presentation a bit later about the new the second wave of VR then put that into 360 camera yeah absolutely and they could just say something like it'd be really cool if they just said yeah you know and if you go to the store what you can do we've, we've got this video for you you can experience what i'm seeing stood here on the stage mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
you know, something like that, yeah. and you put it on, and you get an experience where you can just explore the stage, teleport around, and see it from different vantage points. That'd be really cool, wouldn't it? It really could. It really would. Or, you know, or kind of, here we go, we're walking the E3 show floor um, mm, and with a, yeah. with a 360 camera. Yeah, so just dive in like a periscope thing. Just dive in, but it's in VR. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that'd be cool. Well, we'll see. It's not, it's not looking that hopeful, but... <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. You never know. Mm. It's uh, it's a month or so away. Um, so yeah, that sounds that sounds good. Sony Santa Monica making, hopefully, like maybe maybe the best the best game we we're gonna see yet on the PSVR. Maybe it's a Resident Evil Seven beta. Time will tell. Beta. I mean beta, not a beta. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so the next piece of news is uh, that on HTC Vive, the Steam VR interface got an update um, just the other day, uh, Steam VR beta um, for the home. What it usually looks like is just quite a boring window that appears in front of you, um, and you, you just browse through a, a list of, of square square icons that just you just scroll through and pick your game. Mm-hmm. And you can also pick different backgrounds, but they're just static photos that are wrapped around you, and some work better than others. Uh, so it's, it, it, it's still pretty good, but what... what it, but anyway, it's been it's been updated. So the guys at Steam, at Valve, have updated it, and they've they've called it VR Home. And this is it's really cool. I jumped in today to have a little uh, look at what all the fuss was about, and it's really nice. What they have done instead of this sort of flat picture that you're surrounded with, with a, with a UI in front of you that you, you just select to come on, they've done it much more um, as a proper three D environment. That you can relax in, that you you could actually just sit in, you know, in VR and enjoy. Um, it's more of yeah, it's more of an environment rather than just a menu. That's what they've done, and they've opened it up with a whole different array of environments that you can pick from. They've also made it social, so that you can invite people into these different environments that you can select from. Not only select from, but you can also customize them to your personal taste with an array of furniture um, and different objects that you can put it place in the room wherever you want you could kind of like if you've got a table in the room you could put the table in your virtual room where the table in your room is and you can change the size by just grabbing both ends right you could match you could match the size for instance and i suppose you could do the same with a chair and then you could walk over to the chair as long as you didn't move the chair and the table and sit at the chair do you know what i mean and it would match up which would be pretty cool um, and it would also stop you bumping into it because, you know, there's a chair there sort of thing. So that's quite good. So you can do things like that. And you can also, you've got an avatar now. And you can, there's a different customization options for the avatar. It's mainly just the face. You pick a different shape for the face with the headset. Right. Or just have a square or an oval or whatever. And you've got the, the controllers, which you can have either the controllers or hands. And then, so when you've finished setting up your room or even during setting up your room, you can just make it public, and anyone can just pop in and say hello. Oh, that's so cool. You can start to socialise in there. So if we both had this, for instance, I could be sitting um, either in a, a Japanese-style room in a, in a Japanese house with all my with, with all stuff around that I, that I placed all nicely, and then I could just invite you in, and you could come and see me. And we could invite, you know, Joe Public in to have a, have a look as well, and we could socialise. If you had the same sort of setup, I could just come and visit you. And these environments, they're not just like a static photo. A few weeks ago, um, I mentioned where they were mi- they were interspersing photo- 360 photos, or 360, yeah, 360 pictures with uh, sort of CGI video. And it seems that they've sort of done this. So, for instance, one of the environments is Tower Bridge. So you're down on, em- on the embankment sort of thing, right down where the river is. You've got Tower Bridge right next to you. But more than being just a set picture, the river's moving. Oh, wow. And it's undulating onto the stones. It's moving towards you. You know, there's the, the sort of a bit of a tide just, just sort of bobbing up and down. And there's uh, birds flying around above you, and you can hear them. And so that's the space where you will select what game you're going to play, have a look at this and that, but also where me and you could have a chat or whoever, you know. It's, 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 it's really cool. Um, but the other one that impressed me, I haven't spent that much time in it because I only had a look today when I saw this news, was they've put up um, Valve's headquarters in Seattle as one of the environments. Oh, wow. 
Awesome. And so I saw that and I like downloaded it and went to it and instantly it was just really cool and it's quite a big area. Uh, they've got like the foyer um, and as soon as you go in, right, you appear by the lift on the fifth floor, okay, um, which I never knew it was on the fifth floor. And all of a sudden, you're looking at um, like a tablet hovering in midair with some information, and Gabe Newell reads off it, <laughs> sort of like saying, "I'm Gabe Newell. Welcome to Valve." Um, and he sort of talks a little bit about the environment, and he also he finishes it off with, "We always we love our fans, and many fans come and visit us. If you're ever in the area, please do say hello." I just thought it was so nice, you know. We'll see. We'll see what happens if we're ever in Seattle. <laughs> see if they let us in. Yeah, um, absolutely. I'll knock on the door. But you can walk around, you can go, they've got an area where they've got all their awards um, and all the magazines that featured uh, that they're featured in on, a, on, a, on, a, on two walls sort of opposite. Just like, I don't know, like 100 awards, mm. you know, all, all on shelves, all different awards. You can look at them, you can get really close to them. On the other side, you've got all the magazines featuring like Half-Life 3 and everything. And then you walk through to like the, um, a main office area. Um, you've got a couple of desks. that I don't know if that's where Gabe sits and somebody else that's maybe quite high up, but you've got two desks with sort of dual monitors, um, like really cool sister setups. Um, they've got like a mouse mat with a logo on. It's not a Valve logo. It's a, one of their games. It just looks cool. Um, you can walk around the back of the desk and see their workspace. Then you can go around into the center where they've got like the an ornament of a big valve mm. um their sort of logo and then you can go down they've got like a hall of fame with pictures of all the team fortress characters that you can look at and as you go around you can you're free to walk around as much as you want and you can teleport around the area um you get to a limit and the sort of in the door the, the play space stops and you sort of feel like you're like you've locked me out i want to carry on through here <laughs> um but as well as being able to do that, there's sort of information areas. So if you teleport to it, there's like little circles with, a, with an I, you know, an information I on it, the letter I, and you teleport there, and that will give you some information about that particular area. Like, this is a model of the gravity gun. The, 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 re, the thinking behind the gravity gun is, da, 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 you know, that sort of thing. Well, that's really cool. Um, that's really cool. That's like a little and there's kind loads of, of, uh, steam museum, almost. Yeah, like that. Yeah, and you're getting led, you're getting led around. Where, and there's loads of little information like that. It's like... This, but the reason for this was da da da. This is a character that's never been in a game. Our most complex character has never actually been in a game yet, and stuff like that. But just what, being able to walk around that that headquarters was just. I just thought it was it was awesome. That's very cool. Um, and Tower Bridge was really cool as well. There's an island. And how long was um, you there you can, in the in the um, Steam in Valve's um, um, office? How long was you there for? I reckon I spent about. 20 minutes in there wow. and I could go back and spend some more time I didn't read all the stuff I was sort of rushing around mm. um, but I definitely would go again and it's just more it's I mean it was impressive before the way that when you go into VR even with just sort of the static the static video uh, that, that you saw but now it's much more interactive and there was some other environments as well that um, feature games in the environment so if I'd made it public and you came in to, to sort of chat with me while we're deciding what we're going to do in VR or whatever within the room there's like games like throwing balls and scoring points or one of them was optimised for playing uh, like paper rock scissors uh, another one was optimised for a cannon shooting game where many people could just pick a team and just start like firing cannons at each other within the lobby area wow wow and I was just like yeah this is definitely a step up and it's it's something that I think many weeks ago probably said that PlayStation Home was a bit poor in in the way that uh, in the way it was realised mm-hmm. because because it was a two D thing, but this is very much more like if it makes you think if Sony did a did a PlayStation Home for PSVR users, man, it's it's pretty amazing. You can you can make it exactly as you want with the tools on offer. Save it. You can have multiple environments that you can save. You can have different. You can have your avatar in different outfits that you can save and just pick you know you could have a formal one you could have a i don't know a scruffy one or whatever you can get together and chat and go off and do your own thing and it's all quite seamless it all works really well oh and there was another one a a beach it was a made-up beach but it looked really beautiful sort of like the like like the scarface beach on the back of the wall that the guy's got um the sun's going down so there's sort of a red sky and you can go right close to the sea, and the tide's just lapping onto the beach. And you could just you can just sit there. You can have friends there. You know, it's just really nice. It's just a nice step forward. So that's uh, that's the Steam VR home that's on this in beta at the moment. But it seems to work perfectly well. You know, there'd be no reason not to try it. 
Um, if you want to try it, just go to the properties of your Steam VR and your Steam menu. Um, once that comes up, you'll see that there's a versions tab or something like that, and you just need to select the beta. It's not hard to find. Wow. Um, so that's that's really cool. Um, also, we've had um, some information from Google uh, from Google I/O, and they have revealed a new technology that they're using. It's called Project Surat, I think, and that's S-E-U-R-A-T. I'm going to say Surat. It's named after the French painter. Um, And what this does, this Project Surat, is it's a way that they found of enabling the processing of complex scenes that usually could only be handled by a desktop PC, and it processes these in such a economical way i suppose it enables you to run it on a mobile device right wow so what this what this is doing Mm. this is really amazing it's like stuff that could only run on a pc can now be run using this project surat for google daydream can be run on a mobile vr phone um and it's it's pretty impressive and there's there's a there's a bit of a soundbite from one of one of the devs here well actually it's andre doronichev and he's the director of product management at Daydream. He said, as a developer, you define, you define a volume, one in which you wish the user to move around and view your scene. You also define parameters like the number of polygons and overdraw, and then you let the tool do its magic. What the tool does, it takes dozens of images from different parts of the defined volume, then it automatically generates an entirely new 3D scene, a new 3D scene that looks identical to the original, but is dramatically simplified, and you can still have dynamic interactive elements on it. So you take some complex 3D model that would run on a PC, and this system basically looks at it and then takes just simplifies it, takes all the stuff that it doesn't need out and makes it run on a phone, but looks the same to us and has the same 3D interactivity. Wow. It's kind of like MP3 in the video or something, <laughs> but... Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's condensing it down. It's like reducing the bit rate, if you like. This is as close as I can get to sort of understanding it. It's like, say, say the full qual- the full fat version on the PC was at like five hundred and twelve kbps. Is it? Is that what the uh, measurement is? Um, and it just strips that down to to like a quarter of it, say. Yeah. But when you look at it, you can't see the difference. Wow! Wow! Or you can hardly see the difference. Um, this <coughs> this solution apparently supports Unreal, Unity, and Maya engines, um, and it it just sounds it just sounds really good. There's a guy, there's a video that I've got that I watched on on, on this site from VR Focus um, because they did um, a little trial or a collaboration with Industrial Light and Magic, and this guy sort of says, "Here's I think it might be a Star Wars scene or something like that. It's some scene that looks really beautiful anyway." Mm. And he said he said these guys said that this could take this scene. And put it on a phone and he said and it can wow <laughs> <laughs> and then he said he said when i see people on the phone work walking around this environment on the hands and knees to look at the the fidelity mm. of like of the graphics of the floor he's saying i think we've got something and i'm just like wow that's that's really good if they can get you know sort of cinema he's saying this game to like be it's almost allowing them to get cinematic quality video or digital video you know like on a phone? Wow. I think I think this could imagine how this could benefit the PCs that can all, already sort of do those yeah. that amount of work. It could it could drastically reduce the overhead. Absolutely. For PCs and consoles, you imagine that would like kind of improve PlayStation VR, wouldn't it? That would kind of Yeah. Oh my lord, that's amazing. It's like it could be a massive breakthrough. It's it's it's, it's just sounds I never thought of it for PSVR. But imagine it for consoles that maybe can't run a certain game that's on the PC. It's like, put everything through this mangle, mm, mm. The, the Project Surat mangle. It's like, if I can't see the difference, just get rid of just simplify, 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 yeah. and then give us it in 4K, 60 frames per second on the original Xbox, <laughs> because it won't matter. You won't need, you won't need <laughs> horsepower. But um, yeah, it's quite an impressive feat. Um, might add the link into the show notes for people to watch. It's only a very quick clip. But it's a nice article, yeah, yeah, and it's and it's an interesting technology, and you know Google, they don't sound like they're messing about when they're coming out with this. This is this sounds like it could be a bit of a game changer. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm still choking off that having that drink too quickly before. <laughs> um, 
So the final piece of news I got for you in the VR world is about Hololens and a partnership with Air New Zealand, who've been trialing the Hololens on their flights to improve customer service. What? Yeah. So your steward dons the Hololens, and that allows him to be able to, at a glance, see your name, your seat number, um, and even give you information about your mood. Um, your mood. What you? <laughs> yeah, your mood. Whether you're nervous or not. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> you made me chuckle then. Um, also, we can do things like drop markers. So if you've asked for a drink, or if lots of people have asked him for a drink, you can drop markers at all the seats and have the text above that saying, you know, I don't know, Coke here, um, a large scotch over here, you know, this guy asked for this. And then as he strolls down the aisle, you can just instantly see that. That could probably be shared with the other staff. Mm-hmm. So it's really cool. Um it sounds really good. There's a, there's, a, there's a little video for this that I've watched. It doesn't really show much, though, um, apart from a smiling steward. Um, but, yeah, it can just have stuff like reminders. If somebody's a first-time flyer, if they need a little bit of extra customer service, a little bit of extra, you know, just just talking to because they're, they're nervous or whatever. I'm saying nervous a lot because I'm, I'm, I'm scared. I'm not going like flying. Um, <laughs> but no, that's really cool. You know, it's just like, you know, your meal preference, all that stuff that, that they have on a printout, just they now have on, you know, just, just at their eye level. And this is kind yeah, of the, the as we were saying before, these are the kind of technologies that I want to be able to see with the, I mean, I had a quick look at that link. The steward looks a bit of a burke, but, um, you know, <laughs> with, with maybe a better version of that and a more simplified version of that, you know, it, that would just be, that would be amazing. You know, I, I've, I've talked to a, a tech guy at work who would kind of have many tech conversations and, you know, both of us would happily wear, um, uh, Apple glasses if they did the same thing. You know, we would happily do that. And you're walking down the streets and, and I say, you kind of, I, I see you and it's like, well, there's Darren. And the last thing I, I sent a message to him about that, you know, and it's that and it links yeah, into yeah. my to do app and it says, oh, don't forget next time you see him, you've got to ask him about this project or something like that. I, I'd love that yeah, instant. App- uh, uh, your eyeballs not even your fingertips <laughs> yeah I mean it'll get that this is baby steps yeah. this is the first steps isn't it into this type of technology and you see where it expands into and I was thinking it's more than just customer service on a plane like you just uh, sort of expanded it there I was thinking you never get the wrong order in a restaurant again because the waiter's wearing some kind of augmented device like this and when I say that I want my tomahawk steak and I want it medium rare or probably maybe rare that will be in a massive text that he sees above my head, as well as difficult customers. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and he goes off, and, it, you know, when he comes back, it's like I say, whatever, you know, if, if, if it's right, that's fine. But if I, I say, oh, I, I don't think this is right, he can look above my head and he'll say, I asked for medium rare. The drinks orders would be so easy. Yeah. And if it got to the stage where, like you say, we were all wearing these glasses, imagine getting around at a works night out. I used to have to write it on my Blackberry because it was a nightmare. That was before the smartphones revolution, but I'd make a note on my smartphone mm. of everybody's drink. But you just sort of like log it all on your augmented display. Maybe you can just sort of click your fingers and it goes over to the barman who's also wearing one. He just gets your, gets your order. Or maybe you don't even have to get up. Absolutely. You, know, you just send it. You, just, you wouldn't have to go to the bar, would you? What am I even talking or about? Or like, like Yo Sushi, you know when you want your bill or you want like a service, you press that button and it, and it makes a loud noise. You just press a button and then the waiter would see above your head a very Metal Gear Solid exclamation mark would appear. When? You know, And that's it. And they're like, <laughs> yeah, right, I'll go yeah. and see that person. You know, that sort of stuff. That would be really cool. It's absolutely awesome. Yeah, you know, and it'd say... For looking after the barman, you know, he could say, "This guy's had six. What's he had? He's already had six beers." <laughs> you know, <laughs> just keeping a tally. Anthony Chesson, he's had his eighth pint. Yes, he's like, "Okay, just be careful, son." And <laughs> um, there's, there's loads of things. Though I was in a Weatherspoons the other day, and I didn't realise, but I read the little the leaflet on the table, and I didn't know this, but it said, "You, there's a, you might know this. You might get out more than me." <laughs> um, it said, "If you install the Weatherspoons app on your phone, you can have table service." Oh wow! Oh, well, that's very really cool. Oh, did you not know? And I was like, this is brilliant. But we were going to another bar, so uh, it was that day when we went to a lot of pubs. Oh, right. but yes, yes. We, didn't, we were only in there for one. And I was like, I, I hate going to the bar because it interrupts the flow of conversation. And I was like, this is absolute class. You go to the, any Weatherspoons I think it works in, you download the app, you might even get a free pint for, for downloading the app, um, and then you can sit at the table, you can order your drinks through the app, you might even be able to pay with your Apple Pay too. 
and they do table service if you order through the app. They're awesome. What what's not to like there? Absolutely, I love that. You know, Starbucks have got it. Kind of, you know, when I'm walking across London Bridge, I can I can order my coffee. Um, I can order my coffee ready for when I turn up at that Starbucks. You know, and I just I absolutely love that. You know, using using technology to just kind of like I'm walking across the bridge. I'm going to be you know the Starbucks that I go to when I'm in London has a very big queue. So I basically just you know getting across the bridge tap in my order whatever i want a cold brew or whatever walk in and they're like hi hey they were like hi pick up an order for anthony and they're like there you go anthony have a good day and it's there you know i don't have to queue like any sucker so <laughs> you know that's really cool I, lo- I like all that sort of technology stuff that just kind of improves uh customer service so that's really cool yeah and i think this this could be a big a big market for this kind of technology because yeah. it can like you improve things like when you walk into that starbucks if it recognizes you instantly the guy would say is it the usual whatever it is you have absolutely i go into my beer boutique in in tunbridge wells and i'm like oh i can't remember i had a really nice beer last friday they went i'll tell you what beer you had there you are because it's above my head you know what i had the list of of my last five beers i've bought there is above my head yeah, and when they wait, make a recommendation to you, it's from a genome that's been built by the company that shows other beers that are very similar, and they're giving you really good recommendations. Yeah. The guys don't even need any training. They just read it from the augmented text. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so there you go. Love it. Excellent stuff. Superb. And on that mind-blowing tech note, uh, that's about it for this episode. <laughs> Huge thank you for listening. It's been a long one. It's been a long one, and we haven't even got James. What What's going on here? Um, <laughs> I, know. I thought it was going to be a short one. I can't, it's so, it's so hot. I can't, it's because it's hot, it's gone long. Yes, don't forget you can keep up with us at gamersandlostbark.com. Um, you can also find us on Facebook. On Twitter, we're at Lost Park Pod. You can also find us on YouTube and the Gamers of Lost Park PS4 community and xbox one club Daz, where can we find you online yeah you can find me as wythermator on ps4 xbox one and twitch Daz a gamer on youtube and at Daz whittam on twitter excellent stuff for me i am chessman on xbox live and nintendo switch and ps hyphen chessman on the playstation network and chessman uk on twitter don't forget if you have any feedback please send it to our email address that's feedback at games also if you're feeling generous you can leave us a review on itunes Right, that's about it. I'll catch you later on. See you next week. Guys, actually, you won't see us next week because Daz's birthday is next week. So we're going to take a week off so Daz can enjoy his ripe old age of 40-something. And so we'll see you um, a week (laughs) after. Uh, But enjoy, and uh, we'll catch up with you later. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. See ya. (laughs) 